Eccentric, eccentric. yeah. Well, I'm an Aquarius. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> eccentric. Go. And I went to Waldorf, which is in like an artsy school. Okay. So like, if, I always like to say this about Waldorf. If you're not weird, you're weird. <laughs> to like go to that school, you have to be like a little Is that the, is that the motto? Yeah. Here at Waldorf, where if you're not weird, you're weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I honestly feel more comfortable on stage than off stage because I can fully express myself yeah. and be supported or not supported, but just be myself 100% on stage compared yeah. to like, okay, I got to go to an interview. Okay, I got to go on the bus and you got to like act a certain mm. way. And I, I think that's where putting on a show comes from is just I have full control of my art and that's where I flourish mm -hmm. um, i just came up with that realization just now oh really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right here on the podcast oh, wow. that's what it's for therapy session. Just, yeah exactly like you can it. lie down on the couch if you if you like okay. <laughs> <laughs> i guess the diamond doesn't fall too far from the tree yeah even though diamonds don't grow on trees well, I, yeah. not that i know of i wish that'd be so awesome <laughs> so <laughs> sparkly <laughs> everywhere but then if it hits yeah. you in the head Velina Mai Kako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by shining bright like a diamond. I'm your host, Kamaka, and that line will make sense if you keep listening. Foreshadow. Before we introduce our very talented guest, I want to remind you to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash if you want to support us for as little as $3 a month. If supporting us with money is not for you, but you still love this podcast, please consider leaving us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I read every single review because I appreciate it so much. To prove it, I want to share this review from Melissa Chimera. She says, Kamaka's show is essential for keeping up with the pulse of all things in contemporary Hawaii. His guests are always interesting, sports, entertainment, fashion, but my favorites are people like Daniel Anthony and others engaged with Hawaii's deepest layers of history, culture, and environment. This last episode was so powerful and thought-provoking, and the extent to which he and his guests probe these deeper issues will help enlighten his listeners, especially younger audiences, to understand the true meaning of the show's namesake. Mahalo, Melissa, for your kind comment. Make sure you leave us a review if you want to be an awesome person just like Melissa. Okay, let's introduce our guest. The Makapu'u Twilight Concert returns for its sixth year at Sea Life Park. The star-studded lineup features some of my favorite past guests we've had on this podcast, Anuhea and Kalani Pea. You don't want to miss out on performances by slacky guitar legend Ledward Ka'apana and the graceful Huoka'i Polynesian Productions. Local plate lunches and poke bowls will be available for purchase along with an assortment of craft beer, hard seltzers, and wine by the bottle or glass. Upgrade to the VIP package to gain admission to Sea Life Park prior to the concert and a chance to meet these artists. And let me tell you, they are all awesome. I had an amazing time last year and I can't wait to see you all there this year. For more information, visit sealifeparkhawaii.com or call 808-259-2500. I'll see you there. Our guest today is an ukulele virtuoso from the island of Oahu. This singer, songwriter, and theater producer has established herself as one of the leading ukulele players in the world, known for her fierce and inventive style of play, transcending traditional views of the instrument as a restrictive device. In 2019, she won the coveted Nahoku Hanohano Award for Favorite Entertainer of the Year. With over 50 million views and 400,000 social media followers on her social media channels, this diamond lights up the room every time she performs. She has performed worldwide and is taking the ukulele to new levels while blazing her own path. Her name is Taimane Gardner. Hello, Taimane. Welcome to the podcast here at ID8 Studios. How are you doing? I'm doing good. That was <laughs> quite an intro. <laughs> so out of breath. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you were going for like two minutes. I don't know how you do it on stage when you're just performing, moving around. I don't know how you you aren't out of breath every time. <laughs> it is like a full-on workout. Yeah. It's funny because I have like abs on one side for playing <laughs> ukulele for real. And then like none on the other. So. Side abs. Or side never, abs. Never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so cool to meet you. I've, I've seen you for years and I'm... I'm surprised I didn't reach out to you sooner. I, I have a, a long guest list and then I, I was just scrolling on social media and I, I saw Taimane. I'm like, Taimane, duh, she has to be on the podcast. So I'm so grateful that you responded so quickly to us and you're here today. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I really have been enjoying watching you on Instagram and, <laughs> you know, all the guests and, and how we all kind of relate to, you know, Hawaii. So mm -hmm. very happy to be here. Yeah, mahalo. Well, we have a lot to get into and... I'm really excited to get to know you and hear your story 
in very deep detail and hopefully get a tear or two out of oh, you today. Oh gosh. Right? I warned him earlier, <laughs> I'm a crier. So just be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully happy tears today. So let's start off by getting to know where are you from, where are you grad, and what was it like growing up? Um, born and raised, I'm a Haina. Uh, yeah. Woo. And then I graduated 2007 from Waldorf, which is like a mm -hmm. artsy school, right private off artsy. on the side of the road, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So graduated from there, but I also went to Kalani and New oh, okay. Valley. So, you know, I did a couple different mm -hmm. schools. And uh, growing up was a lot of work. <laughs> I did a, most of my work with the ukulele, I think, at a young age. That's mm -hmm. kind of right where I learned about work ethic and and really just had the energy to like do all the gigs do you know I loved it and so my childhood was definitely different from mm. probably a normal childhood so you were born into this like performer lifestyle kind of so mm. even before I had the ukulele I just loved being on stage I don't know why just even before that like I had ballet recitals and I just loved dancing I would you know put on shows at my house for my dog and my parents <laughs> and just you know I loved creating shows mm -hmm. and then my dad gave me my first ukulele when I was five and that was just kind of the tool that I used to perform even yeah. more and from there, I had a couple different ukulele teachers, Roy Sakuma, the amazing school. Uh, it's still running, mm -hmm. so I highly recommend him. Um, and a, another guy named Mike Basquez, who had like a very small ukulele shop store in Kaimuki. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like right where the old Harry's used to be, the Harry's music. Awesome. Um, so I started with them, and then I, my dad would take me to like contests, and so I kind of like learned how to perform in front of people. Um, and I just kind of built myself from there. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like the ukulele was a way to express yourself at a very early age? How how are you like personality wise? Are you more extroverted, introverted? I would say introverted, extrovert. Mm -hmm. um, I love being on stage, but then I also have a very like private side to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a fun day for me is actually like waking up when I want to, <laughs> getting a little matcha, going home, cleaning my house, listening to like a podcast. And that's, I guess, the way that I like to reset. Very simple. Yeah. yeah. So did, did you ever have moments where you didn't feel comfortable on stage or it was always just naturally like comfortable? Hmm. No. I used to get so nervous, actually, where I had, like, stomach problems mm -hmm. when I was a younger girl. So from playing contests, like, six or seven, my dad would also take me on the streets of Waikiki, and I loved it. And then we actually moved to New Zealand for a couple years, mm. and then we came back because we missed Hawaii, and I think it was around 11 or 12. So my dad would take me back out on the streets of Waikiki just to, like, busk and perform in front of tourists and... Uh, then the late and great Mr. Don Ho um, saw me play and invited me to hit play in his show uh, at the Waikiki Beachcomber. And that was like my first gig, you know, where you're like paid and, you know, you're there every every week. And I would get so nervous before I would go on stage. And so the way I got over it, though, was you just have to like grind through it and just work through it. And you just get a little bit more comfortable with experience. Mm -hmm. And so then it just kind of went away. But there's always a little, I wouldn't call it anxiety, but there's always like a heightened uh, consciousness mm -hmm. before I go on. And, you know, learning to prepare before is a huge help. But sometimes the ukulele will go out, mm -hmm. you know, or sometimes the sound is off or sometimes it's not tuned right. And so I've learned through experience how to, navigate it and how to create that in the show too mm -hmm. because people connect with you as a human mm -hmm. and that you're you make mistakes too so it's how do you i guess add that into the show mm -hmm. makes you human yeah i know jake shimabukuro you guys m may have heard of him <laughs> he's like pretty decent at the ukulele um only <laughs> in my i call him the king of ukulele he really is the king of ukulele and yeah. i have so much respect for him he's jake. awesome such yeah. a nice guy uh, he talked about the ukulele being ex an extension of his body. Um, yeah. So have, did you have that same feeling at an early age? Like it was part of you, um, like when you performed, it was really just like 
using your whole body as like this vessel to share your music, not so much just the mm-hmm. ukulele as separate entities. Yeah, I feel that more now mm-hmm. than when I was a younger child. When I was a younger child, I was learning more about like scales and chords and mm-hmm. you have to learn how to play this and melody. So I was still, and I still am in that way. I, I'm still practicing and making mistakes, but I feel that more now that I feel comfortable to play the chords and not have to worry about it as much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so what else did you do growing up? Was it ukulele just your entire life? Oh, what did I do? Just like, that's where like the normal childhood comes, mm-hmm. you know, hanging out with my girlfriends, checking out the boys, who do you have a crush <laughs> on? Uh, so just normal stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, I played soccer. You know, I think every girl or most girls, you know, play, had played soccer mm-hmm. when they were young. Um, but I had a pretty, pretty good childhood. Yeah. Yeah. How much did ukulele take up though? Did you have to practice? 90 percent yeah yeah so just that 10 percent was your free time yeah and then school and all of that and yeah uh-huh it was was it ever overwhelming like you didn't um, want to quit at some point or you all saw the bigger picture picture there were definitely times where i wish like i i missed a couple banquets or mm. i missed a really special banquet. you know when you're in middle school like the biggest thing is like going to like winter the ball ba- right <laughs> So, you know, I had an opportunity to play in New York. And um, so I did that instead. And looking looking back at it now, it was a great experience. But you do have to sacrifice normal things in childhood to be able to, you know, do this as a living. And so looking back at it now, I appreciate it. But it was definitely hard. Too. Would you change anything? Mm, that's a good question. To be honest, I wish I would have worked even harder. What? Yeah. For Says sure. the hard worker. Yeah. Well, now that I know what came of it, mm-hmm. I wish I would have pushed myself even more if that is possible. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing what I know now, I probably would have pushed myself now. I don't know. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm in my 30s. I got like mm-hmm. so many other things that I want to do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wish I would have pushed harder. I get, yeah. I get that. Yeah. I feel the same way in my sports career. Yeah. You know, because I, I feel like my mindset now is totally different, way yes. more confident, um, had the natural ability back then, you know, played soccer, football, all that. But I feel like if I tried harder mm. or worked harder, I could have been better and gone farther. Yeah. But then I, but then I when I get that question, like, would you change anything? I never want to change anything because I, I love where I'm at today. So I wouldn't want any like ripple effect. To, yeah. Oh, you know, right. You never know <laughs> what's anything. actually yeah. going to happen. It's like a Black Mirror yeah, yeah. episode. What's, what are you going to be? Yeah. 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 I haven't watched that show, but oh. everybody always talks about it. <laughs> it just came out. Yeah. A new season. Yeah. I was just talking to some people the other day actually about it. It sounds like a very interesting show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Do you watch a lot of TV at all? What do you do in your uh, free time? <laughs> what do I do in my free I actually love to work out. Mm-hmm. Um, I do that in the morning. I do a, like a workout and I have my matcha. Okay. And then what am I? I don't know. Because everything that I do for fun is really about my career. Mm-hmm. So like working out to look and feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, doing emails, rehearsing. Um, I love to take baths. <laughs> nice. That's like my way of, you know, relaxing. You have like um, candles and essential oils or... Just, nope. I just like to do it in the dark sometimes. I like turn off the, I don't know. If, yeah, it's probably weird. But yeah, I turn off the lights and I just like to be in my bathtub. The solid, Usually, no music or nothing? Mm, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. I think being in solitude is so important. Yeah, usually yeah. after like a really big tour, when I come mm-hmm. home, I like just like to be in my tub after yeah. in the dark and just, you know, refresh. And what what, what do you way. think? You're just kind of like recapping everything that you've done uh, yeah i guess processing mm-hmm. a little yeah. bit because it's so much when you're touring yeah because yeah. every night you're in a different city and you're not quite sure what like what day it is mm-hmm. so then you know when you get home then you can finally okay today's wednesday <laughs> <laughs> you know so kind of like uh grounds yourself and kind of like reestablishes your roots back home that's that's like your recharge that yeah mm-hmm. doing laundry going back to food land and like, <laughs> poke number one <laughs> i have to get the poke when i get home from food land yeah food okay land. i also love ono seafood yeah yeah oh Kapa my gosh Hulu. i just found out i you know born and raised here and yeah. i just found really out about i know they're one of the top i think oh gosh the miso 
the yeah. miso one is so good. And they're at the farmer's market sometimes. Really? And they have, they, sometimes they're at the Hawaii Kai uh, Kalama Valley okay. shopping center. They park over there. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. What is, what is like your uh, pre-performance routine? Like do you, do you, mm -hmm. what do you eat? Totally. So usually I try not to drink the night before. So mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, hungover. Yeah. That's number one. <laughs> um, try and get some sleep. And then I wake up. I like to do some yoga to kind of like stretch the body out. I don't do anything strenuous the day of too. Like I won't do like a strenuous workout. Um, I kind of chill out and just kind of prepare like, okay, what's the set list going to be? You know, uh, mm -hmm. what are you going to wear? Prepare, you know, making sure all the wires work, the ukuleles, you know, has the right strings. So it's just kind of preparing. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing is sound check when you get there, which is sometimes an hour or two hours before the show. Sound check. Did all the band members come? Are they on time? Cool. Everyone's mm -hmm. here. And then usually we just, you know, get ready, put our makeup on, eat a little bit. I do have, like to have a little glass of wine 30 minutes before. <laughs> not too early and not too late. It's yeah. 30 not minutes. Not too sweet, not too soft, <laughs> rancid. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, yep, and then we like to warm up usually 15 minutes before we get on just to kind of like get everyone in the right wavelength. Mm -hmm. And then we go on stage and we have fun with the audience. And the diamond shines. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what is the name? What is the meaning of your name? Taimane mm -hmm. it is a Samoan name. Uh, I was named by my mom. Uh, she's from Samoa, and it means diamond. Mm -hmm. And my sister's name is Tewila, which means ginger blossom oh. in Samoan. Tewila? Yeah. And then my mom was like, oh, if we're going to have another girl, it's going to be Penina, which means gem. Oh, okay. Yeah, she liked her jewels. <laughs> I mean, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess the diamond doesn't fall too far from the tree. Yeah. Even though diamonds don't grow on trees. Well, I, yeah. Not that I know of. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. <laughs> right? So <laughs> sparkly <laughs> everywhere. But then if it hits yeah. you in the head. Yeah. Least, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So at, at what point did you think that you could really make this into a career? Like this is going to be your life. I think when I started playing with Uncle Don... He really, you know, I was 13 and it was just became like the normal every Tuesday I started playing in his show. And then like when I got my first check, I was like, oh, you know, I can actually start a career mm -hmm. in this. So that was kind of like a little inkling, like maybe a little seed. But I'm still, you know, I was still young at mm -hmm. the time. So I was just kind of in high school. And then I think I really took the bull by the horns like when I was 20. Mm -hmm. In, in uh, college, I decided, you know what, I really want to do this my way. Mm -hmm. And I kind of found my passion at that age. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you went to KCC? I did. Yeah. I did go to KCC. I never finished. <laughs> I have one more semester. Do but, you uh, think you'll ever go back? Oh, gosh. You don't really need to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Because some people, uh, they do that, like athletes that grad, that get drafted or they go professional and then later on they go, and back and, they go back and finish their degree. Yeah. But I mean, at that point, do you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more just like a thing that maybe you can say it, like tell your kids, like, I got a degree, so you got to get a degree. Yeah. But then I also believe that like what you're doing, everyone can create their own path. You know, mm -hmm. there isn't one right path for everybody. You can do whatever you love, whatever you're passionate about, and make it into your career. And you're a perfect example of that. So are you. Yeah, mahalo. You got a yeah. new sponsor Cheers today, to y'all. Yep, <laughs> Texaco Hawaii. Shout <laughs> out to them. The best feel on the planet, I think. <laughs> At least in Hawaii. I don't know. Don't fact check me. Just believe me. Yeah, believe us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what was what was your your first big performance after like being discovered and like did you go on mm. tour or something oh gosh uh depends what you think big is you know if it, that's like the amount of audience in mm. front of you or if it's something special or meaningful um a lot of it happened again like in my teen years and I was just kind of in my own world. I didn't really know what was going on, but I think I had a really big one. I think it was 3,000 people. I think it was 15, 16. Uh, I was opening up for a really big Japanese band. Tube. 
that was the name. And then they also uh, filmed live uh, to Tokyo and Japan, which was like 10 million people. But I was, wow. I, you know, I was just like, okay, <laughs> just <laughs> doing my thing. Yeah. Um, but another big one is probably Plain in Chinatown and it was for like 20 people. And that was kind of the place where I found myself mm -hmm. as an artist. And so that was like really special mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Well, what do you mean when you say you found yourself? Like what, what happened? Mm. So, you know, I built this work ethic as a young person girl you know thanks to my parents who supported me 100 percent. but it was all wipeout you know it was covers it was uh luau shows which is a great place to start mm -hmm. waikiki but it was never my own music mm -hmm. you know it was music that um tourists wanted to hear and so i never really knew myself as an artist mm -hmm. until i found chinatown which was the opposite it was originals only bohemian dancers collaborations poets and so that place it was called on king art center uh it's not there anymore it was uh they had an open mic mm -hmm. and so i played there for the first time and people oh, wow. were just supportive and wanted to hear me as an artist so it was like a perfect spot for me to try things and you know find that part of me yeah and that, mm -hmm. that, that yeah that's so interesting it seems like you just found your environment you know they say shamans don't shine in the dark they don't shine underground. They shine in Chinatown. <laughs> 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 Apparently. I love that. Yeah. So so you, you found your, you found yourself because you found the right environment which yes. led you to what you really wanted to do. And it it, it all starts in Chinatown, you know? Yeah. It's the crazy things that happen <laughs> okay, in Chinatown. You never know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I remember the first time I told my dad, he's like, What? <laughs> he's like, You're not going down there. And so, yeah, I waited more until I was, like, in college. And then he finally, like, tr okay, trusted me. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a first Friday uh, for the first time and just saw how beautiful, you know, Chinatown was and how different it was. And in college, you know, it's kind of the the vibe. Yeah, for sure. So how did you discover your movement? Mm, good yeah. question. So... Because it's, ve it's very unique and entertaining. Yeah, it's I like think you're dancing. Just... It's like it's like a triple threat: dancing, <laughs> playing, and sometimes singing. <laughs> right, and well, it's, the hard part is like doing all of them at the yeah. same time. You're like Beyonce, pretty much. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, <laughs> she's. I I love to watch her concert because it really gives me inspiration. <laughs> but I, that comes from I think just even before I had the ukulele, I was mm. dancing, and I just it's something you don't have to think about either. It's just something that you can like express yourself. While this, you kind of have to. Okay, where am I putting my fingers? And so. Mm. I don't know where that came from either. Mm. It's just how can you stand in one place and then play music or listen to music? Any type of music, you know, if it has a beat, I'm, you know, dancing. Oh, oh I can show you how. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the guy that doesn't dance. <laughs> I, 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 I like to just kind of groove and vibe. But, uh, but I'm yeah, not like a, a still, dancer. But yeah, still, so I like, guess in that sense, I can't like sit still, you know, if, mm -hmm. you're, like, if you're tapping or kind of just nodding. So I guess, yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. And it's like a full experience too. Mm -hmm. I want people to see like the full expression of me. Mm -hmm. And that includes using movement mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. And it makes it super entertaining. Thanks. And like I said in the intro, like you're kind of breaking down the barriers or kind of like the the limitations of what people thought the ukulele had because you know you're just playing a song surf whatever you know mm -hmm. you see you see people you know back in the days they're kind of just standing in one place singing nobody's really moving it making it into this grand performance you know i mean jake does it too mm -hmm. and yeah you know do, do people yeah. do people call you like the the female jake sometimes and do you do you not like that no, I absolutely take it mm -hmm. as a compliment because in my head, he's absolutely the king mm -hmm. of ukulele and he's such a nice guy too. So it's really helped the ukulele community out. Mm -hmm. um, no, sometimes I'll get people saying like, oh my gosh, she like is way too much for me and like way too intense and uh, moves too much. But mm -hmm. it's just me, you know, people are going to love it or, or hate it, but mm -hmm. that's they what I do. They can move out if they don't <laughs> like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And... Did you ever struggle or face any challenges being a female in this kind of male-dominated mm -hmm. world? Because, I mean, besides you and maybe Brittany? Brittany Paiva. Paiva mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. I don't think I, I guess Honoka. Mm-hmm. Um, but those are all kind of recent. I don't, I can't think of anybody who kind of did what you guys are doing back in the day. So you're kind yeah. of the trailblazer. Yeah, especially even with playing ukulele. Mm-hmm. So you're a female, but then you're also playing the ukulele. Um, I've got a little bit more, I wouldn't say pushback, but more rather than being a female, it was more of playing ukulele. So mm. people wouldn't really take that seriously because they never saw it played in a different way. Yeah, and uh, just for context, you never see that one guy that always brings his ukulele to school, sitting <laughs> on the picnic table jamming. You don't, you don't ever see a girl doing that. Yeah, no, you're, you're <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. Um, but I, well, I tour a lot. And mm. so like the ukulele is definitely per- perceived way differently than here in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind it because then it's kind of like an underdog thing and showcasing it it it, it's fun Mm -hmm. you know like okay you don't really take this seriously that's fine and then let me just show you what I can do with it and then it completely changes people Mm -hmm. um so that's it's kind of fun yeah yeah and then being a female in the industry I do think females have a lot more clout than other industries compared to being an artist mm-hmm. because I do think there are a lot of popular pop females uh, doing their thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, but playing ukulele as a female, you're right. There aren't that many female ukulele players who are instrumentalists. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. you know. And now that I think about it, I think back to all the legends, even in guitar. Like, yeah. It's, it's all the legends, yeah, you're right. you know, are all, all male. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... I guess it, it really just maybe it's ahead of its time. So maybe the generation of women instrumentalists is on the rise. On the rise. And you're you're leading that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah super yeah. cool. So did you did you ever feel like or ever have a time where you kind of felt like imposter syndrome? Like, I'm on this big stage. I'm playing ukulele. And like, am I even supposed to be here? After listening to your podcast with Breton and Rock mm-hmm. and listening to a couple interviews with Beyonce, they talk about having a different persona when they go on stage. And I do think that's very true with me too. So I become like this other person that's a little bit more exaggerated than who I actually am um, normally. And so it just, that confidence comes from a different place. So I... I honestly feel more comfortable on stage than off stage, if that makes mm. sense. Okay. Because I can fully express myself yeah. and my, indiv- you know, my individually and be supported or not supported, but just be myself 100% on stage compared yeah. to like, okay, I got to go to an interview. Okay, I got to go on the bus and you got to like act a certain mm. way. And it's yeah. just weird, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, totally being around that. people sometimes. So um, I just... I, I think that's where putting on a show comes from is just I have full control of my art and that's where I flourish. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Did you did you realize that around the time? Sorry. I yeah. 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 Grab a, yeah get, the, get that shock of tea. Get the shock of tea. Yeah. Did you realize that around the time where, when you discovered yourself where? Um, I just came up with that realization just now. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right here on the podcast. Oh, wow. That's what it's for. Therapy session. Just, yeah, exactly. Like you can it. lie down on the couch if you if you like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's for. Yeah. Okay. Super cool. And um, so what? where do your inspirations for your playing and dancing style come from? Because it, it's, it's very... <clears throat> uh, what's the word? Um... I can I, I can I can see it in my mind. Like I can see you, you, you move. Uh, what's the word? Like uh, fiery, feisty, artistic, yeah. going, intense, intense. Uh, <laughs> flamenco. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'm thinking flamenco, and I'm trying to explain flamenco. Ex- not exotic, eccentric. Eccentric, eccentric, yeah. Well, I'm an Aquarius. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> eccentric. Go. And I went to Waldorf, which is in like an artsy school. Okay. So like, if, I always like to say this about Waldorf. If you're not weird, you're weird. <laughs> to like go to that school, you have to be like a little Is that the, is that the motto? Yeah. 
here at Waldorf, where if you're not weird, you're weird. Yep, yep. I <laughs> love that. Yeah, exactly. So um, I was just completely supported mm -hmm. in that way. Like to be weird is okay. Mm. Um, I don't know. What, like the scales and stuff. I, I'm just going to yeah, play yeah. a little it's bit. Little, so yeah, like, yeah. you know. Like Spanish music was kind of very exotic for people mm. like living here in Hawaii. We're so far away. So when I heard the scales, you know, Middle Eastern scales, it was so exotic. Mm. And it was something that I've never heard of from, heard of. So I just really got into that. Mm. And I don't know if it's like a past life, like I'm from there. But it's just something I really, really connect with and was something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was so cool. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> you make it look so easy. And it's like, boom. <laughs> yeah. So this is my baby, by the way. This is a five string custom Kamaka ukulele. Nice. She is new. Wow. And look at that. Yeah. Just gorgeous curly maple. And um, her name is Ka. Just Ka. Yeah. Her name is Ka, the snake in the Jungle Book. Oh, nice. At, at first, I thought she was going to be Bagheera. I just love that name, the Black mm -hmm. Panther Bagheera. But then once I started playing her, she's a little bit like darker. Mm -hmm. Just her sound mm -hmm. and the and the look of her. She's a little gothic, <laughs> you know, so she needed to be Ka. Yeah, I like snake. that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I, ca I can't wait to hear you play it in a couple minutes but i i do want to ask you uh, about your tattoos because oh. you have some really interesting tattoos and i keep staring at the ones especially on your hands they're so sure. they're so cool so this one i got in samoa uh i think i think it was like 25 so like 11 years ago i got this one and i just wanted something to show where I'm from while mm. I play. And, you know, this is kind of where, like, the mana comes from is yeah. the strumming, you know? Yeah. So, like, that was, like, a really powerful place for me to have, you know, a, a Samoan tattoo. And then I recently got this one. Mm -hmm. um, I got this, like, two weeks ago. Nice. Three weeks ago. I got this with my sister. She, she got one as well. She's younger. And uh, so normally in Samoan culture... When you're getting a traditional tattoo, it usually comes in pairs. Mm -hmm. And so these aren't traditional Samoan tattoos, but, you know, they're more modern. But we decided to do it together. Nice. Like that was sisters. the pairs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then this one was done the tap style, the traditional okay. Samoan way of doing it. So I kind of just let the artist, um, Steve, do what he wanted. And he created that. Yeah, super cool. So I, I know you're... Your hapa, well, in Samo is afakasi. Yes. Yeah. And you said your mom is Samoan mm -hmm. and then your dad is... He's from Arizona. <laughs> Arizona, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Ali, yeah. So, so what is like your culture at home? Ooh. In Recently, I've been paying a lot of homage to my Polynesian side because mm -hmm. my mom passed and I really wanted to... Sorry. Here we go. Good. First one. <laughs> let it out. You know, like out. dedicate mm -hmm. my music to her. Um, but um, I love Led Zeppelin too. And so I have that Howley side. You know, my dad really sh um, showcased, you know, the Pink Floyd and the Doors and Led Zeppelin. So I love playing both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, all good. So yeah. you... You really kind of want to bridge that gap or combine like the yeah. the two different like traditional and modern kind of styles. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I am I'm I am Afakasi. Mm -hmm. I'm both Howley and Samoan, so I play both types of music. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, being born and raised here in Hawaii, I have like the local side mm -hmm. as well. You know, so I'll play surf or body surfing. Mm -hmm. So it's just like this mixture, mixing pot of influences that i love playing mm -hmm. being born and raised here in hawaii but also having you know a howly dad and mm -hmm. having a samoan mom mm -hmm. and then playing music that i love to listen to so like classical mm -hmm. and then this is just the instrument that i express myself through yeah yeah awesome beautiful so did you ever have a, a hard time trying to find your identity Ooh. not not as a musician but just as a person as taimane 
uh, half Samoan, half dad from Arizona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think being growing older now into my 30s, you kind of. Uh, hold on, let me figure. Let me say this again. Mm -hmm. When I yeah, when you can you ask me the question again? Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jordan, can can you get a, a paper towel? Thank yeah. you. There we go. Thank you. He usually has his headphones this. in, so oh, thought him at a good time. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so was yeah. Have you ever struggled with your identity, like trying to figure out like who you are as a Afakasi. Hmm. I wouldn't say I struggled trying to find my identity. I think it's definitely brought up more now since my mom passed, mm -hmm. um, trying to find my connection with my Polynesian side. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. <laughs> thank there you. you. So it's really That's brought amazing. that up to, up to, you know, to light. But being in my 30s, I feel like I've also sort of firmed up my identity as well. Mm -hmm. Because before that, you're just kind of figuring out who you are and, you know, what you like and what you don't like. So I guess it's firming up a little bit now. But it was never like a struggle mm -hmm. as a younger yeah, person. Yeah. You know, I was just doing my own thing. And I think being an artist, you're a little bit more accepting. People are more accepting of you trying on new identities and like okay she's gothic today mm -hmm. you know what i mean so um i feel like i was a little bit more supported in my okay fluidity of identity yeah so you, you didn't have those times where you're thinking like ah, i gotta be more samoan and you know get these tattoos or act more like someone because i mean yeah. we're in hawaii and it's cool to be polynesian right yeah it's cool to to be hawaiian or yeah you know samoan that's you know it's it's just more exciting i guess yeah especially yeah. when you're touring yeah you know people want to hear that mm -hmm. side of you i mean there's definitely haters out there you know you're not someone enough um but as i've gotten older i've been more comfortable being who i am and trying not to be more Samoan or being more Haole or more local. I'm just like, this is who I am. You know, I'm an artist. This is my interpretation of a show. This is my interpretation of a song. And if you don't like it, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, because this is truly who I am. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm okay. I'm not like the most Samoan girl, you know. I'm pretty Haole. <laughs> but, you know, it's just that's who I am. Yeah. And people seem to like it. Yes. So, yeah. At least 400 thousand <laughs> people guaranteed like it because they wouldn't be following you unless they did like it unless yeah. they they don't like it and they like following you to hate on you yeah you know what either way i get the either views way, exactly. either way i get the views yeah so jokes on them <laughs> yeah. yeah okay that's that's super interesting because even for me i feel mm -hmm. like i kind of want to be this this bridge to the modern and traditional era too because i have mm -hmm. my hawaiian side but i'm also you know so many other ethnicities but and I, I really love living in this modern era where we can have different influences and do different things that people wouldn't really do back in the day you know but you know there's always times where i'm like gosh oh, should i be going to the lo'i a little bit more I should see, i be yeah. plant planting kalo or yeah. should i olelo hawaii a little bit more but I get I get what you're saying when you're just being you. Because for me, this is just being me. Like, I feel like I don't have to overcompensate by doing something just to, you know, mm -hmm. appear more X, Y, and Z, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't need to olelo Hawaii and bust out all these Hawaiian words just to prove that I can speak Hawaiian fluently, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to, like, show off your <laughs> tattoos. Just be right. like, yeah, look at this. Look how yeah. poly I am, you know? Yeah. You're just being you. Yeah, and I was talking about that. There is like this gray area or this bridge of like you want to be respectful of the traditions, but then also bring it up in an innovative way mm -hmm. that is respectful, but also like this is where we are too. And that's what I love about local fashion designers mm -hmm. is that they're doing that. They're yeah. like creating these traditional designs, but then like new silhouettes. So, you know, there is that like 
treading to make sure, you know, the aunties are okay, but also like this is a modern day Hawaii, you mm-hmm. know. We have new problems and and new issues and how are we going to navigate that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I I guess it could even be taken further into playing instruments as well. Like the purists, you know. It's like, yes. That's not how you're supposed to be Absolutely. playing an ukulele. Our kupunas didn't play mm-hmm. ukuleles like that. Well, our kupunas didn't have ukuleles. It was brought by the Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like everything evolves. Exactly. I think people forget about that. It's like they want to stay stuck in these old ways. And like if we were, if we were doing that, we'd all be in models. Oh, all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. wouldn't have a law shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd be topless. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You, you just have like a pot <laughs> over you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's cool to see the similarities that um, that can translate into all aspects of our life's identity and even, you know, through instruments and yeah. all of that. Okay. Definitely. Um, how are you doing uh, on the shaka tea? You, you got to take a, a shishi um, break yet? I'm okay, actually. Okay. How are you? I'm good. It's it's coming. It's coming to, to me. <laughs> so I can wait. I can wait a little bit. I can wait like maybe yeah. 15 minutes. 15, okay. 20. Okay. Yeah. But so I I am kind of just picturing you playing ukulele I'm, I'm getting really excited um so because because i'm wondering how you're gonna perform just sitting down i don't think i've ever seen oh, yeah, be- <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen you just perform sitting down i guess you have some videos where you're just like playing right it. i can yeah. do it yeah. i can do it but just watch the foot the foot will never yeah, yeah. stop tapping it's so funny because when i record i have to put like a towel down when I record, because I can't, it's like these two, that's mm. it. They, they're they like connected. <laughs> but yeah, I can sit. It really is an <laughs> extension of your body. Yeah. 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 How many ukuleles do you have? Oh, gosh. Like 20? 20? 20? <laughs> Where do you keep all of them? Do you have like, a, like, like how people have bookshelves? They're like spread around like my dad's house, mostly my house. Mm. And, you know, I, I hang them on the wall, you know, and then like I retire them. So usually I get like a new kamaka every couple years. Mm. Um, and then I kind of like to retire them on, like on the wall, and they all have like names. Wow, too. that's so cool! Yeah, I've only had one kamaka for thirty years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tenor, <laughs> I wish baritone, <laughs> soprano. Oh no, I'm talking about myself. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a um, tenor. I was just say okay. <laughs> you know what's sad is I don't I don't play ukulele, and I I wish I wish that I actually took the time to do it. So I I. Joined the Peace Corps in 2016. Oh, cool. I went to Madagascar. I was there for three years. And nice. I, I learned guitar. So, like, um, I bought a guitar while I was over there. Because you have a lot of free time. You're living in the middle of nowhere. You got to mm-hmm. keep yourself occupied. So, I learned guitar. But after, and I got back, I was thinking, why didn't I just bring an ukulele? Because it's so much more right. compact. Yes. And, like, the guitar is so bulky. And yeah. it's kind of hard to, you know, just lie down on a bed and just play <laughs> kind of get comfortable true right and then for traveling too ukulele yeah. is way easier than a guitar exactly and my name like, they named an ukulele after me after you know you. after it's me it's all about you know him. i was born in 1993 <laughs> and soon after 1993 and then soon after they created, created ukulele Kamaka. for me so it's like it's kind of disrespectful that i don't oh my gosh yeah. you know play yourself yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean i guess that's that's one of my future goals is to kind of learn i mean i know the basic everyone will surf yeah <laughs> like, it's like the first thing a good i one. remember in elementary school they taught us that and then um, i think i can play um twinkle twinkle little star that's pretty good that's it, yeah it's more than you know usual yeah people. <laughs> I mean, that's good yeah how how popular is the ukulele in other places outside of Hawaii? It's so funny because when I tour and when I do ukulele festivals, mm-hmm. they're so passionate about the mm-hmm. instrument. Um, and the thing about ukulele festivals that is different from other festivals is that everyone brings their ukulele and they're there to jam. So they're like, okay, cool. We'll like check out these artists. But it's like the open mics and like the after jams is what people are really, really passionate about. Yeah. Um, but they're all over the world and, you know, there are people who are becoming bigger who are, you know, from opposite side of, of the world. And so it's fun to see people play the ukulele in their own style. Mm. But I do think people who are from here have a specific style, too, mm. that I don't think can be replicated. For sure. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like we grew up like starting on the ukulele and playing on the ukulele when like most people 
started to play it on the guitar and then let, they'll switch mm-hmm. to ukulele. But I think there's like a certain, like, I don't know what mm-hmm. you call it, that is very specific to Hawaiian ukulele players. Yeah, I think they're, they're just always related. Like when you think of ukulele, you think of Hawaii. Yeah. When you think of Hawaii, one of the things you think of is spam. Oh, yeah. And then ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> and poke. <laughs> and, and the poke. poke. From Ono Seafood. Oh, Check yeah. Check them out. Um, uh, I was wondering because I, I noticed your mm. your nails are long on your right side, and is that is that just for the ukulele? Just for the ukulele, okay. yeah. So let me just. And are the, are the, those are natural. No, so I sorry, I always gotta shaka do the shaka. Nice. <laughs> Great job. So these are uh, acrylic nails. These are the real nails, and okay. I use these specifically for my flamenco strumming. Oh, okay. Um, so that's why I have these. I. I, even if I grow these out naturally, they're too thin mm-hmm. and it like it's a different tone and then they'll just fly off. So I have to have like thick acrylic nails to be able to play. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't get sore. No, it doesn't. They're like Wolverine claws. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes a, a little bit here if mm-hmm. I overdo it or like my neck because oh. it's like a lot of shoulder action. Yeah, yeah. So I just got to be a little bit careful with that. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever gotten injured? I have. Playing ukulele? I have. How did, how, how did you do that? I pinched a nerve in my oh. neck. Yeah. From, from moving, like kind of like whiplash? Usually, so like when I, it's like the, I'm like stuck in this position. Mm-hmm. And so like I get really, I get really into it. And I think just being in this position and then like doing something really intense. Mm-hmm. I pinched a nerve and it lasted for a month and a half. So could you not perform? I couldn't. I couldn't perform. Wow. I couldn't play. I know I was so sad, but thankfully it was during COVID. So oh, nice. I didn't have too many gigs. Yeah. Uh, but that was kind of a wake up call of I need to take care of myself, mm-hmm. take care of myself, especially when I tour. Because mm-hmm. that is a whole other thing, touring, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about it. The, sure. The tour life. What do you love and hate about it? Uh, we'll start with the hate. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with hate. Let's we'll start with the hate. Uh, airports. Oh. I mean, it's. Trying to get the ukulele on the air on the plane is like the most stressful really? thing ever. They don't just let you. No, you know? it depends oh. on the person who is letting you on the plane, mm-hmm. you know, and if they're in a good mood or not in a good mood. So I've come up with all of these like strategies on like how to hide the ukulele, or you know, I pay extra for priority boarding so I can at least get it on first. Mm-hmm. And there is like a rule, a law, a federal law that is supposed to allow people to bring your instrument on stage if there's space left Mm -hmm. um but you know it's still very stressful and then you get up there and then people are like smashing their suitcases um you know and then that's like your livelihood like right there like oh my gosh you're just so stressed out the whole time yeah yeah uh jet lag can be a little rough Mm -hmm. weird food can be a little rough and then like the it's mostly just traveling so Mm -hmm. like you know being in a van for eight hours you Mm -hmm. know and then having to perform is a lot on the body and then the good things that i like are meeting people after the show so you know i do the merch table and people come up and you know i drove eight hours to come and see you or i flew from this place and so like hearing people's stories and you know how i help them through a hard time in their life is really what Hmm. i get out of playing music that is like really special yeah that's awesome what what is your weirdest fan interaction Oh, <laughs> um, okay. So, <laughs> uh, I think I was around thir- 14. I think I was around 14 at the age. at the time. And this has actually happened here. Mm-hmm. And I was playing on the streets of Waikiki every Friday. And so how many weird stories started with the streets <laughs> of Waikiki? <laughs> right, Kalakaua. <laughs> I used to play in front of the Pacific Beach Hotel, which is now the Olohilani. Mm-hmm. And this guy, I went to the bathroom. And he followed me. So I was like walking to the bathroom and then there's an elevator that takes you up to the bathroom. And he like last second came into the elevator with me. And I was just like, this is really weird. And he was like, a little creepy, you know, like you're all here to myself. And I'm just like, ah, okay. (laughs) So open. And then I went to the bathroom and then I like waited in the bathroom for a while. And then, you know, he was just hanging out. And I'm like, what do I do? Like this guy's just hanging out. And then... We went back into the elevator and he's like, feel my elbow. And I'm like, what? 
<laughs> He's like, yeah, I just feel my elbow. You know, there's like some metal in there. I'm like, okay, great. And then I go back out and then I told the uncles. <laughs> well, I told my dad and my dad told the uncles because I used to busk with the mm-hmm. like beach boys in Waikiki. Yeah. And then they're like, we'll take care of it. And you've never seen that guy again. I never again saw since. that guy again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was, uh, you know, that was Two weeks later, there's fun. a missing person report. <laughs> yeah. They handled it. You know, the uncles, they they handled it. So uh, that so was weird. probably a, one of the weird ones. Yeah, yeah. And then I do get, like, every now and then I'll get, like, a foot, you know, person. Like, please send me photos of your feet. If they offered you a million dollars, would you do it? I would think about it. <laughs> think what do you got to think about? I it's would a think about dollars. it. I would think about it. A million dollars is a lot of a lot of money. <laughs> if it's just that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Just okay. like send me send me a toes. I want to see some toes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't know. I I'd, I'd think about it. Yeah. Oh my god. Would you? Give me $10, I'll I do it. <laughs> that's free money. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the easiest thing. But I get you just you get, can't think about what happens next. Yeah. Just just send it, let it go but off like, into the is space. Is it and, really like no strings attached for just um, a photo? Like they give a, you a million dollars and then they're like, well, I gave you a million dollars. Change. So now. Block them after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take the money and run. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah so I, I can imagine a lot of weird things going down in the DMs and after shows. It's funny, I saw this one clip, I think it was uh, one of the actors, and they asked the same question like on the podcast to him. Like, what is your weirdest fan interaction? And it was in a urinal, like in the bathroom. It always happens in the bathroom. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> We're so vulnerable yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave people alone when they're peeing. <laughs> Please. They got to get the shaka tea out of them. Yes, yeah. Just let them pee in peace. Okay. Yeah. All right. Speaking of peeing, let's go take a quick shishi break and then we'll be right back with a quick performance. Sounds good. All right. Support for this episode comes from Hawaiiverse.com. Hawaiiverse is an online marketplace with locally sourced products so you can go and support local businesses. Before I go to Amazon or any big box stores, I always check Hawaiiverse.com first if I need a gift for a friend, family member, or even myself. So make sure you check out Hawaiiverse.com, our island universe, and your one-stop shop for everything local. Make sure you use code KIA10 to save 10% off of your next order. This podcast is brought to you by ID8 Studios, a four rent commercial soundstage at the Entrepreneur Sandbox here in the heart of Kakako. Whether making a movie, commercial, music, photography, or a podcast, check out ID8 Studios for your next digital media production. And if you're a nonprofit, be sure to ask about ID8 community discounts. For more info on ID8 or to book the st- studio, visit ID8Studios.org. All right, we're back from a quick shishi break. I'm really excited for this part because I get to watch one of the best ukulele players in the world perform wow. live on the podcast. <laughs> no yeah. pressure. In the world. There's 7 billion, 8 billion oh people, I think. Oh so just think about that. No oh. pressure. But out of 8 billion people in the world, you're oh one of the gosh. best. Wow. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs>
That's it's a insane. little snippet. Like the coordination is insane. Just I I don't understand. Like you're you're strumming something, but you're also like tapping. I saw I heard some taps. Yeah. So like, I don't even know how you're strumming and tapping, but still strumming back. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's really mind blowing to me. Yeah. As someone who doesn't play an instrument. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it, it's I love so it. it's so cool. How fast? Like, um, are there like me- measurements of speed to see how? fast people i've never actually measured yeah i have no idea but i love to like challenge like my a musicians world, like a world record kind of thing yeah i is that it th- i wonder if that's actually a like world who can, record the thing, fastest you know, like strum- yeah yeah i do know one guy who's faster his really? name is audrian guerrero he's from Kauai. Uh-huh. i think he has the fastest hands Dang. on ukulele sh- shredding what do you think yeah. that translates to and like if if you weren't playing ukulele like what with what that, could I do? With that talent, yeah. What, what do you think you could <laughs> what do? What could I do? Yeah. I don't know. Like, maybe I'd be really good. Piano? Yeah, like, a lot of this. Huh. It's mostly this. Maybe, what can we do? Maybe leave leave something in the comments what she can <laughs> do with this. <laughs> yes. And like, yeah. this. Yeah, something like that. I mean, you know what I'm really good at is like um, me and my friends, we would play where there's like cards and then the cards have like certain symbols on it. And then mm-hmm. you're holding and then you have a card and you hold it up and then you can put the card down if like you have this, something, something on that symbol. And apparently I'm really good with that. So which is like I hand coordination, yeah. like that type of stuff. So I like and like reaction, reaction time. and like seeing something and then being able to, yeah, you know, act in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. With fingers. That's so interesting. Yeah. I just I, I even when I see other people play ukuleles, I I don't see them play the way you do. Mm. Where your your hand is just like that. Just all over. Yeah. All over the place. Very. I like to stretch. Like okay, yoga. Okay. Yeah. So do you have to do helps. like hand exercises? I do. I okay. so I do. I forgot to mention that. Okay. So before gigs, I also stretch a little okay. bit. Okay. So yeah, how do you do the whole like, thing? Let's take me to some hand exercises. So definitely so. the thumb does a okay. lot of work. So I definitely do this one. Okay. So you guys, sh- I usually like just on myself like or like walls. Something. Yeah. That one's really good. This one, meh, you know, just like warm that up. Mm-hmm. And then I do a lot of like hand on the wall. And so you stretch oh, this okay. part out. Sure. I love that one or straight up. Mm-hmm. So you get this part. And then I um, bend over and just kind of hang there. Bend over. <laughs> and I just hang there. Okay. And I kind of like shake my head yes and then not, you know, no mm-hmm. to like get the neck kind of okay. loosened up. And then last one is, uh, I think it's called the rhomboid. So like your scapula, your back, and then like right between the spine and your scapula, that muscle right there, I'll just like hang on like the edge of a door or oh, the edge yeah, of yeah. the, and I'll just lay there and just, you know, stretch yeah, it out. Yeah. Do you ever get massages? I love massages and I do find them really helpful. Yes, where, I do. Where do you go? I mean, I guess you don't have to uh, expose your spot. But <laughs> no, I'm, no, no. I'm yeah. asking because I just got one two days ago. Okay. This place, Zudao Foot Massage. It's uh-huh. right off Kapiolani. It's near where I live. And I heard it was, re- it was really good. I was so excited. Uh, I was doing a bunch of stuff in the middle of the day. This is on a Saturday. So I was thinking, oh, I, sh- I don't, I got to keep myself awake because I felt like this is a really good moment to nap. But I, I said, okay, don't oh. nap before the massage because maybe when I'm getting massaged, I'll want to fall asleep because it's going to be so relaxing. Mm-hmm. It was the total opposite of uh, that. It was so sore, like uh, deep tissue, like elbow, uh, like two like different parts of the back. And oh, man. I, it was so sore. Like I wanted, I wanted to quit so many times, but uh, I didn't want to say anything because I... I didn't know if it was supposed to be like that because I don't really get massages. Yeah. So I was like, I think it's a good pain. No pain, no gain. Be- you know, beauty is pain. pain right. <laughs> Isn't that weird though? Like people don't want to say anything. Yeah. During a massage. Yeah. Which is, yeah. But I'm so sore now. Oh no. Like, my, you know you can get injured. You can get injured if they like go too Okay. Deep. So maybe I should have said something. I-, I-, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to wait to the next day to see how I feel because maybe it's just, I'm not yeah. used to it and I need this. But no, I'm I'm kind of bruised. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I yeah. I get like one once a month. Okay. And I go all over the place, but I definitely let them know because I've had massages that were too hard. Okay. And then I I get sprained, or you know, the next day it, it's 
hurts. Okay. So definitely let them know. But it, yeah, you got to find the right person, number one, okay. where your body actually relaxes and they can go deep in that way. And uh, two, I don't like going if I'm tired. Don't go okay. when you're tired because you will fall asleep and then you spend all this money and you don't remember what happened. Oh, uh, I guess that's right? a good point. And then the other thing is don't go when you're stiff. It's it's like good for you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure as an athlete, you know mm-hmm. that. Like, you know, it's good for you, but it's so painful. Mm-hmm. So go when you're not stiff if you want to enjoy the massage. Okay, yeah. So maybe I... I went when I was tired and stiff. Oh, no. (laughs) I did exactly what you said not to do. Yeah. Well, do you have any recommendations for places? Um, There's a place in Hawaii Kai called Serenity and Massage. And then I just found this new one in Kahala called Seven Spas. Seven Spas. Serenity and And they're about like 100 bucks for, total for what like, what's for like that, what's an hour setup for full an, body full, but, but whatever you want which okay. is nice T- usually i go sh- hips butt up. yeah okay yeah, my legs on whatever but everything's in my back and my neck mm. and my shoulders i love my shoulders yeah, when yeah. they like really get into it okay. so definitely helpful that okay. and then i do a chiropractor too okay i gotta check that out yeah yeah all right so let's get into instagram questions because oh. i almost forgot that's what we we're supposed to do okay we're just uh social media fan questions Okay, uh, so these are the social media fan questions presented by our sponsor, Texaco Hawaii. Shout out to them. First question comes from Lucky I Live Hawaii. He wants to know, many people consider you their favorite ukulele player. Who is yours and why? That's sweet. I mean, Jake Shimabukuro. Mm-hmm. He was one of my teachers, and so it was his brother, Bruce Shimabukuro. But Jake, just how he's paved the way for ukulele players and the way he uh, treats people and the way he is so respectful. It's not just he is amazing on the ukulele, but just as a person. But I do think his playing is probably the best in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you judge that? Like, was there ever an mm. ukulele playing contest? Well, that's like, a really good question. Yeah, we put you, Jake, Brittany, all the yeah. other people that I don't know about that are really Kale, good at playing ukulele. Kale. Oh, uh-huh. Gamio? Yeah. Oh, I he only knew that crazy. name because I think I grew up with um, my, our family. He, he's from the Big Island. Oh. oh, no, no. I think he lived on the Big Island or something. I remember that name during my childhood because I think my mom was friends with them or maybe they visited us in the big island. i gotta gotta call my mom after yeah this. but mom. i think i think our families know each other they live in wailua now okay. but he is amazing he's also one of my favorite ukulele okay. players but for me i think um after a certain amount of playing there you get to a certain point where it's more about the style uh, of course technicality and cleanliness but sometimes people can be a little too clean in my opinion for ukulele mm. or any instrument you, lo- you lose that grittiness, which also creates like a certain style, mm-hmm. which I love. Mm-hmm. But technicality, cleanliness, use of melody, how they use the melody, and if they can rip. <laughs> <laughs> if they can shred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. This guy, Neil, the one who just left the, the question, he's a big ukulele enthusiast. He actually invited me to watch a show at uh, Blue Note with Jake Shimabukuro. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was so awesome. That was my first time seeing him perform live. Have you seen Pure yeah. Heart when he was Yeah, so Heart? I saw them at the something Luau, the, um, what is it called? The one I see Life Park. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, they used to be yeah. one of our sponsors. I'm so sorry. The something Luau. Aloha Kai Luau. Okay. Aloha Kai Luau. And it was Pure Heart, 10 Feet, and I think Kimie. Nice. I think that was the lineup. Saw the lineup. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was, they did like a reunion or something or they were going to do yeah. a reunion. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think they I did or they are going to do a reunion. Pure Heart at Blue yeah. Note. I know they, yeah, last year. They yeah. Did. Super cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, this next question comes from ukulele underscore MJ. Advice for stage fright with multiple exclamation <laughs> points. So I guess advice for stage fright. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, I think this would also be helpful for people who have to talk, um, do like presentations. Mm -hmm. For me, it's helpful if you kind of create a different person or like, you know, different part of you and like that person kind of takes over. So that's helpful. Um, The more you do it, you just have to do it. Repetition. Repetition, Mm -hmm. experience. You'll get better at it. Maybe a glass of wine. (laughs) Secretly. A couple of shots. (laughs) Just case a of little. beer just a little <laughs> not too much <laughs> just a little yeah. okay yeah that's good 
I'm sure a lot of people, you know, go through that, and especially for musicians. Even um, Kelly Boy DeLima, he mm -hmm. was talking about um, before early on his, in his career, he thought he also had to just like smoke a little bit before he he went on and then later on he realized he didn't have to do that but he said nice. even to this day he gets a little stage fright but i i brought up the question um and he had to think about it on the podcast was that i wonder if he gets nervous now because he's such a legend oh. and he doesn't want to disappoint so before early on in, in your career you want to prove that you're, you're good you want to you know make sure that you're giving people a good performance and they know your name mm -hmm. but I, I, when you get to a certain point where like you jay kelly boy delima you're at this kind of pinnacle of at the top mm -hmm. you don't want to disappoint people mm -hmm. and you, you have like these expectations you have to live up to and it's a different type of like nervousness or stage fright mm -hmm. the, can you relate to any of that? Um, personally, I love being right before the mm -hmm. headliner. So if there's like an ukulele festival, like mm -hmm. put me before. I How don't want to be the, the headliner. headliner. <laughs> <laughs> but if I am the headliner, um, one, I think about the fans who came specifically to see me and how they travel so far. Mm -hmm. So I do take it very seriously. But again, I think it just comes down to like, look, I am who I am. I can only be myself. And that is a confidence that I hold. Mm -hmm. The only things that I do worry about is if my ukulele goes out, if a string breaks. Mm -hmm. um, so I try and prepare myself as much as possible for that. But that yeah. will happen. And it's how do you handle that, mm -hmm. you know, and just make it a part of the show. Yeah. So don't make too many mistakes, but have fun. Yeah. yeah. I try not to think about it too much. Like you're a headliner and there's like 5,000 people out there. Yeah. You know? Have you ever had a time i'm sure you have but what was like the biggest i guess not mishap but like something happened and oh, okay. you had to overcome it and you're like ah oh, no my string broke uh, so yeah. much anxiety oh gosh there's two that come to mind okay. for me okay so one where i was younger this one was at uh, aloha tower oh i forget the place that was like right on the edge there i forget what it was called um but they had music there and i played there First time wearing shoes, which is why I never wear shoes again. So I wore heels because like I'm, you know, in my 20s, I'm going to do my thing. <laughs> so first like minute, I accidentally, I accidentally hit my pedals and then the whole thing goes out because like I was kicking and I like hit the pedals. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. And that was the first minute. And then after that, I plugged back in. Everything's cool. Like, okay, we're getting back into it. Second minute, I like hit like water. Just like, you know, because they put water in the front. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's a water everywhere. And so we had to stop. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was terrible. So never again, shoes. Okay. And, you know, sometimes, yeah. So there's that one. And then there was another one. Oh, this was in Malibu in California. This was like last year. And poor guy. They had two sound people. Um, and one of them, it was his first sound show like doing sound and um he was just kind of more of the what, what do you call it the the guy learning mm -hmm. um the girl who was like the main sound person she leaves she just left mm -hmm. during our sound check because they booked another show so they just left the guy the apprentice they left the apprentice mm -hmm. poor he had no idea what he was doing and we weren't even done with the sound check but she like left like good luck Whoa. Then we had to play the show, and it was a disaster. It was a disaster. It was um, tough. It was like hard for musicians to hear each other, so our rhythm was off. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So we couldn't even hear each other the right way, and then the songs were just out of it. So then we took an intermission, and so I said, you know, hey guys, we're taking an intermission, but during this time we're going to do a sound check because, you know, this guy, this is his first time. Let's give him, you know, some support. And we're just, you guys are going to see what happens behind the scenes. So this is something that we usually do before the set. And so the audience was very um, supportive mm -hmm. and forgiving. And so we kind of got it right. And then um, that was that. Was that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like how yeah. you kind of, you know, made it into... Because it wasn't his fault at yeah. all, you know. He was yeah. just like a deer in headlights and didn't know. But, well, that's um, very nice of you to consider that. You know, not a lot of people will, you know, look at all the perspectives of that. You know, they'll 
Yeah, just well, get mad at the situation. I or did a tell person. the other people that yeah. they should never do that again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm glad you didn't get mad at that guy. No, I didn't. You could have yeah. really just messed it, him up. Right, his first time yeah. traumatic, like musician calls yeah. him out in front of everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> spotlights. Yeah, and it was a year ago, so that thing would have been all over social media. Yeah. Famous ukulele player Having Taimane <laughs> yells at new. <laughs> Having a fit. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Cancelled. All right, that's funny you brought up the the barefoot one because my next question comes from Lucas underscore Cardoso dot exe. This person wants to know: Do you like being barefoot, or is it something you only do for stage performance, and why? So we know the why. <laughs> yeah, I do like being barefoot. Mm-hmm. I think that is kind of like a thing that we grew up in Hawaii. Yeah. We're just barefoot, or we're wearing surfers, you mm-hmm. know, from longs. Um, I think we have the best grass here. I love feeling <laughs> the sand. I love feeling the grass. And I think it's just so normal for us yeah. to be w- just barefoot. Yeah. So. so you've been barefoot at all your performances since? I wouldn't say all. Okay. Depends where it is. Depends where. Yeah. But I would say 98% mm-hmm. barefoot. Okay. Unless it's like a super cute fashion show <laughs> and like I'm wearing something, you know, I got to, you know, yeah, yeah, you do a little yeah. fashion. Your girl got to dress up a no little fashion. bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, next question comes from Sukulele, which is a great username. On average, how much time do you spend practicing the ukulele each week? Ooh. Depends on shows coming up. So usually I practice a lot more if there's a big show. So like the Hokus, I'm performing in two weeks. So I'll be practicing usually two to three hours and not every day, maybe like two to three times a week. Mm-hmm. When you're this good, you don't need practice. <laughs> <laughs> I did all my practicing when I was young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You already got your 10,000 hours in. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, yeah. I, it's never ending, the practicing sure. and the being frustrated about it. Mm-hmm. it. It's always there. Yeah. 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 Speaking of hokus, I forgot that's coming up. That so is. I think by the time this episode comes out, it will be the hokus week, actually. Oh. Yeah. And you're, what are you, what are you up for? I am up for favorite entertainer mm. of the year, which is um, the fans are deciding that. That one's mm. open to the public. And then instrumental composition of the year, instrumental album of the year, and music video of the year. Oh, nice. And, which music video? Uh, Pipeline's Daughter. I didn't yeah. see that one. I got oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Okay, I'm uh, that one was filmed right in, now, uh, so I don't uh, that was filmed in Chinatown at a super cute tiki bar called Skull and Crown. So it has like the tiki surf guitar vibes Mm -hmm. yeah oh wow even the thumbnail looks cool yeah it's it's a good one and uh we're actually performing that song uh at the hokus too so i've been practicing that hardcore with my band my band's like please we've had enough practice we're fine and i'm like no we gotta do it more (laughs) there's like a certain point of practicing that i like but you can also over practice if that makes sense so it's like there's a little like there's a nice Trying little spot yeah. yeah okay cool well i'm excited to watch that and see who wins mm-hmm. and i know there's a lot of good competition yeah no yeah. there's a lot of amazing people in the categories yeah. i'm just stoked to be able to perform yeah for yeah. sure Got well it. you won in 2019 so yeah we'll see we'll see <laughs> yeah so did they have one during covid they did they did so mm-hmm. it was just virtual that one yes okay. that was at hawaii theater and they did it just virtual okay mm-hmm so was it where 2023 so four years since mm-hmm. your first first win or first that, that's like the biggest one yeah that's like winning the best award of the yeah then the night, there's right? also the grammys yeah so are you trying to i'd like to in? yeah i'd like to are you inside because you have to do certain things right you yes. have to get into the whatever committee or Mm-hmm. academy very similar yeah. to the hokus yeah okay. so you got to become a member and then there's all of these hoops that you need to go through in order to like get on the ballot and then mm-hmm. once you're in the ballot then same thing like then it comes down to like five people in that category mm-hmm. and then you win okay and then yeah. do you submit it yourself or do because when they said nominate nation is, mm-hmm. is somebody actually nominating you oh that's a good question i think Someone does have to nominate you, but then I think you're the one that has to send the information. Okay. Yeah. And that's like just a member. management stuff. Yeah. We don't worry about that we don't stuff. Worry about that. <laughs> We're the talent. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, give me something to eat. I'm just 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Last question comes from Emma C X E M Max. Ooh. I think that's how you read it. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> What tattoos do you plan to get in the future? Oh. I think I'm actually good、one. with these two tattoos. So, on it, it's so funny. That was like a dance move you just did there. Oh, really? You're like, <laughs> good. <laughs> Tattoo dance. Yeah,、um, little Vogue. Yeah, right? <laughs> But、uh, this one was kind of like last minute, to be honest. So, like, Tabila,、mm. my sister, got one. And yeah, normally, traditionally, it's supposed to be in pairs. I didn't think she was going to be done so quickly because she got like a full side tattoo.、Mm. And I thought it was going to be like six hours. So he'd probably be done. She was done in three hours. And、wow. then he's like, okay, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, okay, well, there's <laughs> time. So let's do the ankle. Okay. And、uh, no, I think, I'm, I think I'm good. Okay. I think、nice. I'm good with two. For now. For now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the most sore? For this one, the fingers. Fingers were really, and he started with the fingers, and it was my first tattoo. I was、oh, like,、okay. oh my gosh. Then it chilled out here. Then it started hurting again here, and then it chilled out here. Okay. And then for this one, this one was tap style, which was painful, definitely. But I think this star, I don't know if you can see that, but there's、uh. like a star here. Oh, yeah. And so that was really like, painful. I think there's like a tendon or something、mm-hmm. there. So that was painful. But besides that, It was okay. Yeah. So before you get a tattoo, it's like a couple glasses of wine, maybe before. Well, they say you shouldn't <laughs> probably drink before, but yeah. Awesome. Well, mahalo everybody for those social media fan questions. And make sure you leave some for our next guest, and maybe a question will make it on the podcast. All right. So let's move on to the back half of the podcast. Oh.、Okay. I still got some things that I, I need to know. To start it off, I. I'd like to ask my guests, what does Keep It Aloha mean to them? So, the, you know, our show name is Keep It Aloha. Okay. In your life, how do you keep it aloha? What does aloha mean to you?、Mm. That's a really good question. And I think being born and raised here, there's like a really deep meaning. For me, keeping it aloha is talking about. I don't know how to describe it except when you're in Kahala Mall. <laughs> and you see the young kids singing Christmas songs, but there's like spam musubis, you know, everywhere. And it's just like this very homey, cozy, unique experience that only happens in Hawaii. Specifically at Kahala Mall. Yeah, yeah. Kahala Mall is probably the most coziest <laughs> but you, mall of them all. Well, you know what I mean? Like, th- <laughs>、yeah. that, like, local people, like, or like when you just finished soccer and, you know, you're like 12 and you're you just. Finished a game and like someone brings spam m u s u b i s Yeah. You know, and it's like the homemade kind mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. the furikake inside.、Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's just that thing that、that's、is so thing,、yeah. unique to Hawaii that doesn't happen anywhere.、Mm-hmm. And so, like, being able to share those t y p e of stories, I think for me, is aloha. I love that answer. <laughs> that was a good answer. Oh, thank you. And I, I, I totally get what, you know what, what, what you're talking about because, yeah, I. My grandma lives in Hawaii Kai. So, we, we, I'm from the Big Island, but we would spend summers in Hawaii Kai. And then my senior year of high school, I moved to Kaiser. So, I actually、oh, technically graduated、uh-huh. from Kaiser. So, you know, Coco Marina and、mm-hmm. Kala Mall is like usually the places I'd go to. I feel like when you live on that side, you, it's really rare to go anywhere past UH. Yeah. Because you <laughs> when you're going to school. True. Like、yeah. my dad thought IAO was far. Yeah. So, <laughs> we just stayed in town. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, Kahala Mall, I got this, the image in my head when he said, said that. There's always like a, somebody performing on the stage.、Mm-hmm. And it,、yes. I think it's just the, the rugs that they have,、yes. <laughs> like everything, like totally just home vibes. Right? Yeah. Just in your memory. Yeah. In your memory. Especially、and、Christmas for some reason. Exactly.、Like、yeah. Like special all、time. the things. Yeah. I can see all the Starbucks and then the other food shops right here. And then they got the Apple store over there. And then. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, or maybe like a Hawaiian Christmas here is just done so differently,、yeah. you know? And then you light up the tree at Honolulu Hale.、Mm-hmm. And ju- that is also like an interesting way of keeping it aloha. It's like you go inside. I go every year、mm-hmm. annually just to like, you look at the wreaths. And then, of course, there's one made of slippers.、Mm-hmm. Like that is like keep it aloha. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love how unique our culture is. It's, it's not that, you know, Hawaiian culture, local culture, Hawaii culture. Is the only unique culture in the world, but it's, just, it's very different than a lot of others. Yeah. And we do have that aloha that's 
mm, sometimes seen but mostly felt. Yeah. And I, I love that about this place. Yeah. Um, I was just about to ask you something about uh, the you talked about Honolulu Hale and going to see that. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, what what's your favorite uh, holiday tradition? Christmas or any of the any of the holidays. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Well, which well, Christmas or? Yeah, I guess Christmas. Yeah, I like I like oh, learning okay. people what people do during Christmas. I'm one of those people that love to like go in the car, usually with a glass of wine. I'm not <laughs> driving, but I'll go with like a friend or like family or a boyfriend, and we'll like drive around and just look at the Christmas lights. Mm-hmm. You know, when you drive in Waikiki and you just see all of the apartments, you know, with mm-hmm. all of the Christmas. I, I love doing that. Yeah, that's, that's fun. really. Special. There's there's certain streets that always have all yes. the best lights, right? And then my boyfriend, he's mm-hmm. a huge fan of New Year's Eve, so you he's know, a big firework guy. Huge! <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> he's gonna hate me for saying that, but yeah, he's a huge like. Is he know. local? Yeah. So he, defini- is, so he, de- kilo. he definitely buys the illegals, huh? <laughs> we- I'm not saying yeah. <laughs> anything. I'm not saying anything. But he's from Makakilo, so you know. It gets crazy in the neighborhoods. <laughs> I've seen the videos. I've yeah. seen the videos and it looks crazy over there. I'm always on the big island for for New Year's and oh. they're definitely illegals over yeah. there. Yeah. Is it crazy over there too during uh, New yeah, Year's Eve? Yeah. And I think some people, they just, just love it. They, they love spending their money on fireworks. Yeah. And just getting together and hanging out. I mean, I love the hanging out, eating part. Yeah. And watching the fireworks. I don't spend my money on fireworks. Yeah. Um, but, but again, an interesting part of Hawaiian culture too yeah. is like illegal fireworks. <laughs> yeah. You so, know? so this episode is coming out right after July 4th. Oh, okay. Um, and I was talking about that holiday with some other people and I was asking them like, do you like really like July 4th? Like, what do you do on July 4th? Because it's something that we never really celebrate, at least in my family. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like it, Independence Day. Cool. And I guess it might just be a Hawaii thing because we don't really... Mm-hmm care about it yeah um but we care about the fireworks but i felt i feel like <laughs> new year's eve is our fourth of july yeah like, absolutely <laughs> i don't pop fireworks on fourth of july but new year's eve you know you got everything out yeah from poppers to sparklers to aerials <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i know the whole like sitting on the freeway but that was interesting this past new year's eve where they had like a cop car like a- each mile oh really yeah so people couldn't really stay and stop on the freeway but that was oh okay i didn't know yeah there i saw like a cop car like every mile just you know making sure no one would stop yeah yeah on the freeway but yeah oh. any like opportunity fireworks hawaiian people shh, we're into it <laughs> yeah yeah we we have we have some of the weirdest uh obsessions i feel like lifted yodas oh my gosh <laughs> cherry fireworks <laughs> <laughs> lifted yodas right oh what else what is the girl version of the lifted Yoda? I feel like girls like lifted Yodas too. Or at no, least no, Yodas. but you, so like guys, like that's like the, you think of a local boy thinking gold chain, yeah. lifted Yoda. Oh. So if I'm thinking like, so I'm thinking yeah, maybe yeah. The, the jewelry, like right, the, the, but that's, but that's more aunties, like Gold jewelry. Okay, we got to have like some sort of sleeve or like yeah. one like <laughs> leg um, Polynesian tattoo here. Yeah. And then also the titta bun, always, oh, the titta always bun, the yeah. titta bun, the hoops. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, but what do they drive? I think they. I've seen Toyota. I yeah. mean, I've seen the. Oh, I've seen McKenna Maduli showed up oh, yeah? to our place with a lifted Toyota. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, nice. She's awesome. Yeah, she is. She's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's what they. Yeah, yeah. They drive. Well, leave some comments if you. Yeah. If you have some uh, ideas. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so we were just talking mm-hmm. about the Nahokus earlier. And that's coming up. What was it like winning your first one? Oh, well, I was actually on tour when mm. the Hokus happened, when I won it. So I was in Germany. I was in Germany. Mm. So I wasn't even there. Oh, so I wasn't able to actually accept it. I just, I remember waking up and then having all of these text messages saying, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> and then I found out that I won a Hoku, which was really cool. Mm. Um, but I hope, you know, we'll see what this this new year brings and maybe I'll be able to actually, you know, Receive accept person, one and, yeah. and I will absolutely cry. You know, you got a little <laughs> taste of that. So <Yeah. laughs> I'll probably cry a lot. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck. I, I'll be watching. Where do they air it? It's like um, K5? Or uh, I think it's Hawaii News Now. Hawaii News Now. Mm-hmm. But it'll be live streaming. And then I've got my really big show at Hawaii Theater August 25th. Oh, yeah. I so that one's, flyer. yeah. That's my my album, but with dancers and a narrator and Ariel and a halau. So it's going to be a Wait, full... Wait, Ariel, like the um, people hanging? and Yeah. Okay, not the Little Mermaid. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just had to clarify that just in case people were right, expecting like, to see the, the little, little mermaid, mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> i can play that though i'll play that but yeah so that okay. one's a big one too okay cool so that's awesome did, did you feel like that did anything to your career if anything maybe just like validated your career path or do you because you were already you're kind of already on your way before even the whole mm. you know but did that like did you wake up feeling like a new person <laughs> I, I mean absolutely you know yeah. i've i've tried and you know i've put stuff out in the nahokus for a while now Mm -hmm. you know and so to be able to have that validation uh is really special Mm -hmm. you know just what i'm doing and what i have been doing they kind of recognize Mm -hmm. which is really cool and yeah Mm -hmm. yeah cool Mm -hmm. does your culture or just like the inspirations from other cultures play a role in how you create music and how you um, put on your performances Absolutely. So, you know, I grew up listening to rock music usually and classical. And so that is a huge part of my culture, Mm -hmm. even though I'm local and from here. That is, you know, my dad's side. And that's, you know, that's what also people enjoy, too, is like, okay, it's an ukulele, but they're listening to things that they know about, you know, Led Zeppelin and classical. It's something they haven't seen before. So that is something special. And then recently my latest album is my Polynesian side. So how to incorporate... Uh, you know, I have Hawaiian lyrics, Samoan lyrics, Tahitian ukulele. I have Samoan fire knife drumming in it. And so how am I incorporating that now? Like that's my latest thing into my music now, which is really mm-hmm. special for me. So this this show that's going to happen, they're going to be, I'm going to be presenting that. Oh, so there's going to be a halau in there. And um, I'll be coming out with a new music video too in July where you're going to see a, f- a woman fire knife dancer. Oh, super cool. So sick. I went to the championship fire Fun, knife Fun, yeah, yeah, at PCC last month because I was specifically mm-hmm. looking for a female fire knife. Oh, you scouting. I was scouting. Nice. Yeah. They have a new category now. Mm-hmm. And I believe there was about five girls mm-hmm. and there was one. Um, her name is Matalasi. She is incredible. She mm-hmm. was beautiful. But to also see that tradition of being morphed, you know, because usually you think of fire as the man doing it, usually. And now you're seeing females do it. And so to see them play with that masculine energy and how they're creating it into like a feminine energy and putting that into it is something new and something beautiful to watch. Mm-hmm. And to also see the men supporting these, these girls, they're all really young, too. You know, Matalasi, I think she's in her late 20s, but most of them are like early 20s, teens. I think there's one girl that was like 11. Yeah. So to see them support these girls in their Mm. in their talent is really beautiful. Awesome. Well, how do people get tickets? Um, Just go to my website, taimane.com. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Check it out. Yeah. And there's like regular tickets, VIP tickets. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Or you can go to Hawaii Theater. Okay. Um, dot com and well, where sure. where can you sneak in to watch it for free um <laughs> asking for a friend um, well, what's the what's the streaming site oh yeah. gosh <laughs> i do think it will be live streamed but you should just come <laughs> okay. just come yeah. yeah don't be cheap buy a ticket <laughs> support local <laughs> yeah support local <laughs> yeah okay where do you think the future of the ukulele is heading or even like the mm-hmm. future of your own music i <laughs> The ukulele has definitely gotten so popular over the years, but I see a lot more talented musician ukulele players around the world mm-hmm. who are creating their own style. So that I do I see more serious instrumental ukulele players that are are growing and even more gr- young girls also growing into this this new industry. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of amazing instrumentalists around the world. Yeah, what more can be done? So I mean, you you and Jake kind of unlocked all these different oh, playing styles. Oh, there's so much to do with and it. Like, mm-hmm. h- like, how do you come up with a new idea? Like, 
EDM on the ukulele. <laughs> yeah, Brit- Brittany Paiva does that. Oh, no way. Yeah, she does. That's I always think you could put like a fire starter here and so like fire could come out. Oh, okay. So there's, you know, you can do a lot yeah. with the ukulele. Yeah. Um, speaking of Arizona, going back an hour or so. <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> uh, you say your dad's from Arizona. I went there a couple m- months ago for work and then I went to the uh, music museum. There's a big music museum have you been i have not oh, dad gotta no, take you. i know it's so cool it, so they have m- instruments from all over the world like every single continent country whatever like they have an africa section they got asian section uh, uh pacific islands polynesian section wow. um and it was just so cool to see the different types of instruments and how creative people are yeah do you think you'd ever play like something where it's like a double ukulele you know how like i like the Mm -hmm. double guitar like some sort of weird ukulele contraption i'd be down to try it i love string instruments i've always wanted to try the harp Mm. i think the harp is just a beautiful or a lyre that would be crazy to see you shredding on a harp (laughs) that'd be beautiful (laughs) i've always loved the sound of that and so i do think there's a little bit of influence in that sound too when i play the ukulele Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well what's the next instrument you'd love to learn or just it's ukulele. My number or one is my babe. Yeah, <laughs> my number one is my my the ukulele and how I can I guess adapt it into my playing. Like for the five string is very unique for mm-hmm. ukulele. It's usually either four oh, wait, I did, or wait, six wait, or eight. Two, three. Yeah. Oh, two at the top. Yep. So yes. I I double the G string, um, and then I have two low G strings too. Just because for my style, I just I feel like it balances the sound of the ukulele so much. Because mm. usually an uk sounds like that's the high G, mm. and then I personally like the low, and then I doubled. So it really gives mm. that like warmth and low end that I enjoy. Totally. So totally. and then I, I've got like a fun little EQ here and a bunch of effects. So the ukulele is also growing and becoming yeah. modern with the Kamaka family. Yeah. Yeah. My family. My family. <laughs> Kamaka's family. The King Kamakas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, I de- yeah, I gotta come come check out that performance and see you play live. I mean, I got a little snippet. That was a good little teaser. Yeah. So I, I, I gotta see see the whole thing because it's so fun watching you dance and move and yes, it's really like if you haven't seen it, if you're just listening to this, just go to YouTube, type in Taimane. Um, and she's so popular. You don't even have to type in the last name. That's how you know you made it. If you can just type in like Kanye, Beyonce. Right? Not you know? even Kanye. It's Ye. Or Ye. is it just Ye? Yeah. Ye or the Ye. shorter Ye. your name can be and you, people can find you, that's how you know right. how, how you made it. My name is period. It's just the period. So my name is... I don't type that because you might get something else on Google. <laughs> just don't go, don't right. type in period. Then <laughs> definitely Comma. don't go to the images. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder what. I guess it, it, if you type in ka, it'd probably be the the, the serpent. Snake. Yeah, yeah, the, the snake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a long way to go before I can just be known as ka. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so cam. cam. Cam, but then kamama schools. They're gonna oh, think yeah. kamama schools. Kama, oh, they're yeah. gonna think kama the, the the pig. Kamak. Kamak. I like kamak. Maybe kamak people. That's, people call me kamak. That's nice. Kamak. Yeah. When I was in Madagascar, kamak. apparently. I think one one Malagasy word for bean is like kalamak or kamak. Oh. So I, in the beginning when I got there, some people thought my name was like bean, like oh. kamak, ka- kalamak or something like that. Interesting. Yeah, kamak. Yeah. I, like, I like kamak. Kamak. Yeah. Some some friends call me kamak. I like kamaks. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I played at an island right next to Madagascar called uh, La Reunion. Oh, you went to Reunion, Reunion Island? Reunion? Yeah. Yeah. It reminded me so much of Hawaii because yeah. they had minor birds. They had the same like plants. I think they have a volcano there too. Do they? Yeah. But they spoke French. That mm-hmm. was like the difference. Yeah. Yeah. But it was very similar to Hawaii and it's so opposite from... Why? Well, I'm going to blow your mind here, okay? So this is where I'm going to share my oh, okay. Madagascar knowledge. So uh, the Hawaiian language and the Malagasy language is in the same Austronesian family. Wow. Same as Samoan, Maori. Oh, wow. Those. And it's crazy because like you said, it's on the other side of the world. Um, so I don't know how that happened. Wow. But even like a lot of the words. So like let's use the word Lani for sky. In, in Malagasy, it's Lanitra. In Samoan, it's Langi. So it's awesome. Even the the numbers, Fitu, Valu, 
that's seven eight ehiku evalu yeah wow and like a lot of similarities too wow yeah it's really interesting and then like it looks you go to the coast and it's green it's mm-hmm. just like hawaii um the the islands off of madagascar is very similar as well so it, it really felt like i was on a bigger island mm-hmm. yeah yeah but it's crazy when you see how similar some places are and you even if they're so far away yeah yeah you just can't get away from the minor birds yeah they will follow you <laughs> <laughs> people would trip out to see you play in madagascar because they they love their instruments you know uh, uh playing music singing music uh, they would trip out to see somebody play the ukulele like that i don't think they've ever seen something like that unless they somehow found it on facebook or youtube yeah, yeah beautiful yeah where where is the one place in the world you'd love to perform egypt in front of the pyramids oh i've always wanted a be crazy right? music video with the got, pyramids it, behind yeah. you i mean i know that pink floyd did something i would have loved to have gone to that like pink floyd with the egyptian pyramids i've been to the pyramids i've never played yeah like an actual show there but it's just oh. very spiritual the the air around it I, so, I got this whole idea in my head where you're just playing and you're kind of doing like that middle east like that mm-hmm. like how the snake comes up mm-hmm. with ka mm-hmm, right. and the snake's coming up yeah. maybe there's like a snake oh. person yeah like that uh-huh right oh uh, that would be so cool yeah and then the lights yeah that would be special and then aliens come in oh then, gosh oh wait no am i going off topic? no let's no. do it okay. i'm down <laughs> i'm i'm an artist let's go <laughs> I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That'd, that'd be super cool. Yeah. How or, how do you even make that happen? Like how? The how, what? Like to perform in front of the pyramids. I have. I think you just got to be like really big, like the uh, Pink Floyd, and mm. then maybe they'll allow you. Mm. I did actually go and play in front of the pyramids, so we got, but it was so far away. They wouldn't allow anyone close because mm. they recently had an issue of people going on to the pyramid and, oh, okay. you know doing their thing so we were able to but it was just so far away so to be able to actually do it with lights and aliens yeah i'm down yeah i would love that aren't the pyramids super fascinating yeah like how right did they even I, like I've, I've heard stories in different conspiracy theories i don't know how into it you are i'm i'm not into it but I, i've just heard mm-hmm. um because back then i don't know thousands of years ago how did they even make that and like build it with out all the resources that we have right today like mathematically I, I, I everything's perfect something with the gravity or like the salt or like the earth or whatever um it made the gravity different so that they could build it like that or mm-hmm. maybe it was aliens yeah so i mean some people definitely yeah. think aliens had had help because like right how are you able to make that yeah. hundreds of years ago and everything's mathematically perfect and you yeah. know such huge boulders and being able to stack it that way is humanly how is that possible yeah so gotta play in front of that yes yes, yes definitely that'll be out of this world yeah for sure mm-hmm. okay so uh, throughout your whole career you've had a lot of like highs and successes but what what do you think was the the biggest struggle for you and how did you overcome it Hmm. The biggest struggle. Mm-hmm. That's a really good question. Can you ask that again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I got you. So, well, you know, out of y- your whole career in music and life, you've had a lot of successes, right? Um, but what what has been some of the struggles that you had to face to get where you are today? Because I feel like the struggle is part of the journey Absolutely. and it makes you so much better. You know, I, I don't trust people without any hardship in their life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think it it's necessary for a person to become who they are. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Cue the tears. Cause I know they're <laughs> coming. So just be ready. Um, my childhood was not the easiest. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Don't apologize. Um, it was a great childhood. But it was rough in a way that um, the work ethic was rough. Mm -hmm. Um, But I appreciate it because I would not be where I am today because of it. But there's a lot of sacrifices as a child that I I had to make. Mm -hmm. Um, And certain relationships in my life um, had to be sacrificed in order for me to 
be uh, where I am now. And um, so I guess that's probably the hardest struggles is mm-hmm. coming back to those relationships and appreciating what they gave me. Mm-hmm. But at the time, it was um, sacrificed and, and rough. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. no, no matter what, it's always going to be hard. It, yeah. Choose your heart. You, yeah, choose your heart. Exactly. And yeah. there's going to be certain things that you have to do, at least at the time you think you have to do to get to where you're at. Because, yeah. like, I mean, I go to that all the all the time and trying to, you know, build my career and get this podcast where I want it to be and, like, other my other business ventures. And yeah. thinking, like, okay, what do I have to stop? What, what do I have to keep in my life? What do mm-hmm. I have to, you know, change? And it's always a constant struggle. Yeah. And then you're always questioning, like, oh, is this the right decision? Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot of sacrifice. And I, it's weird because now I want even more sacrifice, if that makes sense. Um, Just because now I appreciate it and I understand what that means. And to be the best or one, you know, trying to be the best. there is no balance. Mm-hmm. So it's struggling to try and find that balance, but also striving to be the best is probably one of the biggest struggles. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's not it's not something that I feel like everybody has to go through in certain levels for like have having a career like this. Yeah. Where you know, it's it's almost like a talent. You're not like you don't have an office job or something. Mm-hmm. You know, you're performing. You you have so many different things going on in your life. You got your personal life. You got mm-hmm. your performing life. You got social media. You have so many different factors that play into it. Yeah, and it, it makes it harder for the hard, harder than the normal person, you know, to deal with. Yeah. It's, you know, what type of life do you want? Do you want the crazy lifestyle that, you know, with the car and everything, it's going to be rough Mm -hmm. to grind. But if it were easy, then everyone would have it, right? So, yeah, I I was very much instilled with a hard work ethic as a young child. Um, But I appreciate that now to this day, Yeah, you know, and I take pride in it and I want to work harder, Mm. you know, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I love how I love how you you kind of turned that into a positive, and you appreciate it. Yeah, you know, even though it, it's like we said, it was tough, but get, taking and extracting all the good things from it, and seeing that you can turn that tough time into a lesson, yeah. into something that keeps you moving forward instead of hold, holding you back. Mm-hmm. I think that that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna let anybody dim your your shine. No. Yeah. No. Just keep, just keep shining like that True. diamond you are. Like the Taimane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do wish I wasn't so much like a crier. Like uh, that's another struggle. Like tie, like keep it together, please. Don't. <laughs> but I think I'm just like an artist and this is really who I am. And I think you, do, you just feel just deeply. Gotta... <laughs> are you, you must be an empath. I'm definitely sensitive. Okay. Hell yes. I'm one of the most sensitive people. Um, I think it's my Scorpio side for mm. sure. But um yeah, I think that's what probably makes me a good artist is mm-hmm. I'm able to feel these emotions and be able to translate it to music. Yeah. But then I cry all the time too. So. Well, you know. I think by doing that, you, it shows that you're vulnerable and open. Yeah. And I think you said it, it helps you feel it, but I think it helps others feel it as well because they see that emotion. Yeah. You know, you can't you can't fake that. Mm. You know, authenticity. Absolutely. People will will notice it real quick. True. So I, I think that's your it's your superpower. Thank you. Crying is your superpower <laughs> in a way. You Thanks, know? Kamaka. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate that. People do love when they see you're you're vulnerable mm-hmm. on stage too. You know, yeah, you're just sure. a human, just like them. Yeah. So you're right. Awesome. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. What is some advice for mm-hmm. people who are trying to learn ukulele? Ooh, advice for people who are trying to learn ukulele. Number one, 
get an ukulele. Number two, learn how to tune your ukulele. Number three. W- without the app? Without. Uh, <laughs> you could do it with the app. It's okay. fine. But just remember, like, when you're on stage and you don't have your phone, what are you going to do mm-hmm. if you need to tune it, right? Yeah. But learn how to tune. And then there's a ton of things on YouTube now of, you know, learning how to strum first, strum first, mm-hmm. and then learn how to sing and then put those two together. Also depends what kind of ukulele player you want to be. Do you mm-hmm. want to be a singer ukulele or do you want to be an instrumentalist ukulele? Yeah. Or is the guy at the party that busts out his ukulele and gets the crowd going? <laughs> what? Oh, you want to be that? No, oh, no, no yeah. I don't want to be, but I'm just throwing <laughs> out another option. Yeah, yeah, you could be that too, right? You could be that. Yeah. yeah. I swear, in every school, there's one guy yeah. who just walks around with the ukulele. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, has Even his sunglasses Walder, on North. maybe. And then like he he's always sunglasses, yes. he like drags his slippers <laughs> yeah. so you can hear him coming. And he's always like just walking super slow, <laughs> singing his heart out. Yeah. yeah. We all we need that <laughs> in our Hawaiian ecosystem. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, well mahalo for the advice. Um what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? Hmm. I like, I'm really passionate about being healthy, if that's mm. a weird thing to know. Oh, that, how is that a weird thing? <laughs> more yeah. people should be passionate yeah, about that. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, the older I get, I can feel it a lot more. And I, I love being able to do this, but health is just really important and able for me to do that. So I mm. love working out. I lo- I'm passionate about food and skincare. So I guess... <laughs> Something that's different. Okay, what's your skincare routine? I'm sure a lot of people sunscreen. Know this. <laughs> sunscreen. Tons of sunscreen, especially during summertime. What brand? Um, I actually do mermaid, uh, mermaid gel by oh, Can mermaid. Make, which is a Japanese oh, okay. uh, thing you can get off of um, Amazon. Apparently, Korean skincare is really good. Korean skincare well, is really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've tried that before, especially with their sunscreens. Mm-hmm. I feel like Japan and Korea they're really good with sunscreen. Oh yeah, well you see their skin; it's flawless, beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah, I love covering it. Like I, I'm into that whole yeah, yeah. you know ninja vibe of yeah, covering yeah. yourself, and people are always looking at me like, "What?" Yeah, I personally liked the masks just because of the UV coverage, okay. you know, and that was yeah. My <laughs> my, my grandma was Korean. I don't know if she was like hundred percent or like half fifty percent, but she looked Korean and she uh, would always have like the skincare and like the mask and yes. the hair up or like her um hair things in the uh, bands or I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Another yeah. reason why I love Hawaii is yeah. like that Asian influence is kind of accepted here. So you can mm. cover yourself and, you know, be okay. Yeah. As well as the food. I'm a huge fan of like Korean and Japanese food too. Oh, nice. Absolutely. What's the top foods? Um, I'm really into, the, well, Japan and Korea make it. It's like the jelly eggs. I think in Korea, jelly eggs. it's like, um, I they call that. it crack eggs. Um, so it's so good. Cause it's like crap. It's like crap. It's like <laughs> but yeah, you like marinate it in soy sauce, honey. Um, I put a little onion powder, garlic powder, and then you like, it's not, it's like almost boiled, but it's still kind of jelly like in the middle. And then you just let it marinate for like a day and oh, you can wow. let it marinate for, you know, four or five days. And then you cut it open and you eat it with your rice and it's just amazing. Oh, so so yeah. it's not like a jelly egg. It's like the kind where they put in like some of the ramen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's what that it's called. Egg. Oh, okay. Love I didn't that. know what it was called. That's yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Okay. Really what about um like meat jun? <laughs> um, I like the side plates. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you seem like a little bit more healthy than like chicken katsu. And <laughs> I mean, I'm a local girl too. Yeah, yeah. I definitely have that side of me too. Yeah. The chicken katsu and the spam musubi, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I gotta have a spam musubi every now and then. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll go back to being, you know, and then poke, of course, is yeah, yeah. healthy and yeah. from here. Quick uh, trivia. Do you know how many cans of spam is sold in Hawaii every single year? How many? Just, just throw out a number. 100,000? 100,000? I don't know. I don't know. 10,000? Seven million. Oh wow! Okay, damn. Okay, I was really off. There. Yeah, yeah. I wow. that just in I Hawaii. Did, just in Hawaii. Wow. I did, I only know that because I did a trivia with one of the guests, and I, I'm pretty sure it was seven million. Yeah. yeah, we have a festival for it. I've played oh, yeah? at the festival yeah. for it. It's awesome. Nice in Waikiki. Yeah. yeah. I saw you played at the Waikai. I don't know how they say it. Oh yeah, Waikai. Waikai. I don't know how how they they pronounce it. Waikai. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. The the surf 
pool. Yes. Surf pool. I still haven't been there yet, but it looks really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, what was your take on it? Uh, I'm a huge foodie, mm-hmm. and they have like a Michelin starred um, chef there. So I really want to try wow. the food. Like they have a really nice restaurant there, and then they have like a casual bar there that kind of feels like the Turtle Bay. The old they had like a a, a club in the old Turtle Bay, which mm-hmm. reminds me of it. But I thought it was cool. Okay. You know, everyone. I was like playing for the opening, and no one cared. Everyone was just like, <laughs> "I just want to be on the surf thing." Like everyone was just watching. <laughs> like, is she done yet? <laughs> well, they got mad at me because they had to stop the surf pool because it was so loud, yeah. like the rushing water. So they stopped it, and everyone got bummed out because I had to like play my set. And yeah. then like I was like, "Okay, see you later." And they all came back when the surf <laughs> lineup came back on. That's yeah. funny. It's just funny, you know, yeah. surfers. Yeah. It it is kind of weird and kind of disappointing when you're not playing in front of the right crowd that appreciates you. Because, for example, uh, I went to a Yo-Yo Ma concert. I got invited oh, to Oh, nice. But I'm not really not into that kind of music. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I couldn't appreciate it as much. Like, I appreciated the skill and the talent. It's so amazing. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, that's not really, like, I don't know what's good or what's mm-hmm. bad. Um, and I, I know other people would have enjoyed it so much more. So like maybe yeah. when you're playing at that white guy place, like people not yeah. appreciate it, aiding it. But the people that know you, they're like, that's freaking Taimonic <laughs> Garden or what? Like, why yeah. don't you guys want to watch this? Yeah, you know? I, I don't mind, to be honest. I don't I don't mind. I've played in front of so many different types of audiences that it's OK. Foodies are hard to play for, too. Mm-hmm. Like when I do foodie events, they're only about the food, like nothing about music at all. It's just about the food. But I am a foodie too, and I can appreciate that. But if I also, and then corporate gigs, I do corporate gigs too, and they have no idea who you are. Mm-hmm. So it's a good challenge yeah. for me. Because you want to w- try to win them try over. Try to win yeah. them over, you know. And it's also how the event is set up. Like if you get introduced, that actually makes a huge yeah. difference that people will actually watch what you're doing compared yeah. to if you just stand up and just play randomly. Yeah. People yeah. always got to introduce the musicians. I think that's like a thing that everybody should do. Yeah. yeah. Or, you, you know, I'm okay with playing background too. You mm-hmm. know, you just tell me what you want <laughs> and I can prepare myself mentally. Yeah. And then I can, I'll be all right. And then s- send the check. Yeah. And then yeah. send the check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Do you ever ha- feel like you have to change your style of music for certain venues? I do that. Mm-hmm. I do that at every gig. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll write like a loose set list. And then depending on the crowd, I also like to look at the crowd like 10, minif- 10 minutes before I go on just to see what they're about. Mm-hmm. Are they drunk? Are <laughs> they like concert hall? Are they a loud crowd mm-hmm. or are they more cerebral? And then I tr- and then I like change the set list. Mm-hmm. And then during the show, my poor musicians, it's kind of like a quiz for them. So I give them all the songs and I'm like, We'll see. And then I'll like bring something up like four years yeah. ago that we've never played. But just because I feel like the audience is yeah. in that mood is how the set is created. Oh, wow. So they got to stay on their toes. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I'll, or I'll just be like, okay, solo. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go. That's you know, funny. so my musicians, they're, yeah, they're, they're good people and they, they roll with it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Which I need. I need to know that they will go with it. You know, because I think the worst thing that can happen is they freeze mm-hmm. or I freeze and then people don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then like I have to do something else to like catch catch it up. But mm-hmm. I'm holding people's attention. I'm giving them a journey where they can hopefully feel relaxed and go with me. They're like trusting me to go through this journey. So mm-hmm. it is a lot of energy at, to create that, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So. So what what are your future plans? What's your ultimate goal? Like, what do you hope to accomplish in life? Oh, what's that's the meaning really of life? Question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are these are questions. I love what I'm doing now. Um, creating shows. I love touring. I love creating music. I look. You know, the thing about music is that you can do so many different things. Do you want to mm. do s- movies? So I'm doing a, a feature film right now. I'm doing the, the music behind it. So there's so many different avenues. So I'm still kind of flowing with it and seeing where it goes. So I don't want to put like a set goal to it. I have maybe like a loose goal, like let's go to the Egyptian pyramids mm-hmm. and play. But, you know, mm-hmm. we're I'm just going with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're not going with the flow. You're flowing with the goal. 
Flowing with the go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did I say that? Just no, no, no. <laughs> I say that because uh, Yancy Medeiros, the fighter. Oh, he, yeah? He, he said that line before. He doesn't flow with the go. Oh, he doesn't go with the flow. He flows with the go. I love that. Yeah. yeah Flowing yeah. with the go. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So before we end the podcast, I got to know, what is your life hack? Were okay. you able to think of one? Yes, I okay. was able to think of one and... I'm going to show you a little ukulele hack. Oh, nice. Yeah? Okay, cool. so I'm just going to give you a quick little ukulele lesson tip. So you have your ukulele, and I'm going to teach you how to do that. Something like that. So that like really quick flamenco strumming, mm -hmm. and I thought you would appreciate this because you want to take your pointer finger. Always helpful to have nails. Mm -hmm. And then you actually want to create like me, a shaka. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There, nice. Nice. It. Nice. Nice. Okay. So I want you kind of are like touching your shaka on your ukulele. Mm -hmm. So it's that type of feel, and you kind of want to hike up your wrist a little bit. Yeah. And okay. then, and then just, and then you know how it's kind of loose with your shaka. Oh, yeah, the just loose shaka. Like that, right? All right. Nice. And then, so once you have that feeling, then you're gonna just take your oh, what is it? Your pointer, and you just lightly brush the strings with that like feeling. Mm -hmm. You want to try? Let's, you want to try it on okay. the hook? Yeah, yeah, try it on the hook. Am I worthy? Is this yeah. like Thor's hammer? Like, <laughs> not everybody's worthy for it? Do it. Can I put this down? Okay, so mm -hmm. I don't have to like do yeah, anything. Yeah, you can just leave it open. Okay. So you got my shaka. Mm hmm. And like this. Uh huh. And like, so like this. Uh huh. And then it's gonna. And you just brush it on top okay. of. Yep. And then if you do it here, okay. it'll be easier. Yeah. And then if you had nails, you'd be like crazy. Mm. You'd be super crazy. Uh huh. And it's all in the wrist, just like you're throwing that shaka. Okay. Uh -huh. so the loose shaka, Luke. I'm driving through traffic. Very. Somebody just let me go in front of them. What? Drop the loose shaka. Loose shaka. <laughs> Beautiful. All in the <laughs> wrist. Yeah. So that is my life hack if you want to play really fast strumming. Okay. That's why I, when in doubt, pinky and thumb out. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Even with ukulele playing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, mahalo so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Last question, actually, before we get into my last uh, questions. Okay. It's like rapid fire answers. Oh. Um, what is a question you wish you wish I asked you today? Oh. What is a question that I wish you asked me? Um, what's your favorite restaurant? Oh, that's actually part of my last question. Oh, so I guess we're perfect. Let's go right into it then. Okay, th these Ooh. are my last fast fave five questions. Okay? okay, rapid fire answers. Favorite airplane snack? Oh, um, yeah, I love the taco. What well, not the taco? The chips uh, on Hawaiian Airlines. What are they? The chips. The chips. Like the taro. On, chips? Yeah, the taro the chips. Taro chips? Yep. Yeah, love that. Okay, cool. I think somebody also mentioned that really? before. Okay, favorite performance. Favorite performance, probably the open mic uh, at Chinatown mm, on King Center. I started right? it all. Found myself, yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. Favorite way to recharge? My tub in the dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot you already answered that. Let me let me uh, ask another question because I already sure. knew the answer. Favorite thing to do outside of playing ukulele and taking a bath in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> I also like going to Capulani and like having a picnic blanket and just like laying on it and staring at the the branches of the trees oh, and okay. listening to the birds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very nature vibes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Favorite all time restaurant in Hawaii? Ooh. Oh, in Hawaii? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's go Hawaii and then outside. Let me let me give you three because it looks like you're really struggling yeah. with this. <laughs> Maybe five. <laughs> We're going to have to up sure. this a little bit sure. more. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Well, okay, number one, I do love Livestock Tavern in Chinatown. Their food is so good. Okay, never been um, there. They're great. I love Merriman's, too. I went to the one on mm -hmm. the Big Island for the first time. That's and the original one, yeah. Yeah, and I just, I loved the feel of that one. Okay. And his food is really good. Yeah, I haven't really been good. there, but I heard, oh, yeah? I've heard good things. Oh, there's a couple of good places. Um, there's like a spot on uh, Mount Alani, uh, the hotel. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, their food. I live Hilo side. So oh, you live Hilo side. Okay. Yeah. Um... And then, yeah, at the moment, favorite poke is Ono Seafood. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. 
Are you going to go there right after this? They should give me free poke this? with yeah, the amount this, of, like, yes. hyping. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <Do> Sponsor. <it. laughs> I'm sure um, we can make that work. Yeah, Nature. There's a place in called, played, uh, called Nature in Waikiki. Best drinks. Really good, mm-hmm. cute cocktails. I'm a huge foodie, so I could just keep going, like, all, all of these places. Chin Chin has really cute drinks. It's a wine bar in Chinatown. Mm. Fet is amazing in Chinatown oh. as well. Love that place. We almost went there one time, but um, we couldn't get a reservation. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we did it, like, last minute. That's why. Yeah. So, well, I'll definitely get there. Mm-hmm. So, if Ono Seafood were to give you, like, free Poke Bowls for life, would you be, like, an ambassador for them? Oh, Okay, but they also a little weird. I'm hesitant because like I don't. I'm <laughs> a little weird with commitment. Like it's so hard for me to like commit to one. If I can have other poke bowls, <laughs> I'm trying. If I can have other poke bowls, then absolutely I would talk them up. So I not an asked. exclusive ambassador. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Sorry, sorry. It's just how I am. It's not okay. you. I was just wondering how hard we had to push it on the podcast. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Okay. Last question. Favorite movie. Oh, The Fountain huh, by um, oh, Darren Aronofsky, the director, and then Rachel Weiss. I don't know how you say your last name. Oh, Rachel Weiss. 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 Yeah. I know. I know. She's in it. Yeah. And then I always call him um, Wolfman from X-Men. What's his name? I mean, Wolverine. Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. But what's his actual uh, Hugh Jackman. Name? Hugh Jackman. Yeah. He's also in it, too. <laughs> okay. That's absolutely my favorite movie. Okay. That the one and Virgin Fountain. Suicides. Love I that don't know either of those. Oh, I got to yeah. look it up. So I got to look up that, your new music video. <laughs> uh yeah restaurants i got yeah i got some homework we all got homework <laughs> here on the podcast well that's all we have today i just want to say mahalo for coming on and being vulnerable and open to sharing your story and you know successes and struggles and all all the good stuff that we needed to hear today thank yeah. you for having did you have me anything else you wanted to share before we wrap up um i just wanted to say that i really appreciate what you're doing because you're putting people in Hawaii on like a pedestal and, and I guess giving them exposure, which is helpful to our islands. For sure. So. Well, we have so much talent here. Yeah, we you do. Know, one thing I was talking about uh, a couple of days ago was there's no shortage of talent here. Mm-hmm. It's just the expertise to do certain things in business. Mm. That that's a little lacking. So we You're do need right. sometimes people from outside of Hawaii to come in and kind yeah. of give us that push and direction. Mm-hmm. Because we, there are very smart and knowledgeable people in these fields that have been doing this for a long time. Like we're always like ten years back in mm. something, so mm-hmm. we have all the talent. We kind of just need somebody to m- mold it and like make us into these diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to yeah. Kimmy A Minor because she has like a nonprofit where mm-hmm. she's created this um, space where she invites people from the mainland, like in the Grammys, mm-hmm. and helps musicians such as me or even people who are just starting out and want to be a musician with those types of questions, mm-hmm. like how like music is a business, yeah. what we need to do with royalties, what websites we can use, and I agree with you. I think a lot of us actually leave and go to the mainland because there's more resources. Mm-hmm. But I love what Kimmy. Is doing because she's creating a foundation where we're getting those resources and we can stay here, mm. you know. So I absolutely agree with That's you. That's funny about that. I was talking with Kimye uh, yeah. the other week about this. Um, yeah, and we're, hopefully we can work on some really cool things. She's so yeah. passionate about it oh, too. She's, she's awesome. so passionate. Yes. One of my favorite artists of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, so where can we find you? Um, uh, Timeani.com. IG, I'll be on the Hokus, and then the big, 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 big show, <laughs> Hawaii Theater, August 25th. Like, I don't, I think I have one gig before that, but I'm really just putting my yeah. whole energy for a show into that yes. show. Go fill, fill those seats. Yes. Get your tickets before it sells out. Yes. Yeah. Well, mahalo Taimane for joining us on the Keep It All podcast. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and remember to always keep it aloha.